I'll uh, call to order uh, this uh, April 11th, uh, 2024, regular meeting of the Board of Education. Please rise for the pledge of the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, can we have roll call? Here. Mary Lee Hall. Here. Samantha Hall. Here. William Hall. Here. Jeremy Hatch. Here. Jennifer Hankel. Here. Nathan Hankel. Here. James Hawley. Here. Joseph Wilson. Here. I have a couple of uh, meetings to announce. Uh, the board had an executive session on uh, legal matters um, on, I believe it was the 8th. Um, uh, and uh, another executive session immediately before this meeting on a uh, matter of student discipline and uh, some staff staffing matters. Um, all right, moving on to item 2.01, uh, approval of the April 11th, 2024 board agenda. I move to approve the agenda as presented. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any nays or abstentions? That motion carries. Uh, I'll move to uh, item 3.01. I will move to approve the uh, March 21st, 2024 regular board meeting minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Any nays or abstentions? That motion carries. Uh, moving on to item 4.01. Uh, done. Okay, so it is April, almost the end of the school year, so there's usually a lot going on. So this week, the Unified Track Club hosted an inclusion week, um, and the Unified Track Club is comprised of skill, uh, kids in the life, sk life skills program, and then just kids um, from, any kids from in the school. And they um, hosted various activities at lunch during the week this week, um, to just kind of spread awareness about Unified Track. Um, and the importance of inclusion. The uh, choir and orchestra fundraised uh, a bunch of money to be able to go on a trip to Nashville this week. They left, I believe, on Tuesday night. Um, they drove all through the night, and they're there right now. And I heard it's really they're having a really great time. The uh, powerlifting club. They had 18 students qualify for a na for nationals competition in New Orleans, and 11 students are going to compete. The competition takes place um, Friday, April 29th through uh, Sunday, April 21st, and they're hoping to send some kids to the world level competition. The District Arts and Tech Fair is Thursday, April 25th, and I believe it's going to be hosted in the high school. Is that correct? And then, probably. Yes. Okay. Yep, um, and it features um, arts and tech projects from students all over the district, so I think it'll be exciting to see it in the new space that we have. On Friday, May 3rd, Student Council is hosting a mental health day for students at the high school. This um, event is hosted in preparation for upcoming testing season, whether it be AP or standardized testing. So um, students will be able to participate in various activities of their choosing, such as like playing outdoor games, or making slime, or just sitting and watching a movie as in an effort to hopefully give them a break and let them rest a little bit before the busy testing season. Um, this is just a little bit exciting for me, but uh, there's 42 days until graduation. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, prom is gonna be Saturday, May 4th, so tickets are on sale until tomorrow, April 12th. Um, so if you have kids that are going to prom, make sure that they buy their tickets by tomorrow. And then I just wanted to uh, talk about our new librarian, Miss Daniel. She was hired last month. 
Um, something really cool she's been doing is every week she has activities posted um, just outside the class or just outside the library. Uh, she opens like the glass doors and she has like things on the bulletin board every week. So this week was blackout poetry where there was like various sheets of paper from books and you would like black out the words to like create your own poem. Last week I believe was um, pin board poetry, pin board poetry where she had a bunch of words printed out on paper and you just took them and you kind of pinned them up on the board to create some sort of poem. And next week, not to spoil it, but uh, there's gonna be, she's planning on doing something called Poem in Your Pocket where you're gonna be able to catch a butterfly from the rafters uh, that hang outside the library and you'll be able to like have a poem to carry around for the day. So it's just been really cool to see what she's been doing with the new space. So that's all I have. Thank you. All right, um, item 5.01, uh, National Merit Scholar Awards, uh, presented by Dr. Molin. Uh, Dr. Molin, take it away. Oh. <laughs> so good evening, everyone. Um, we have uh, the fortunate, uh, we're very fortunate to have three National Merit finalists in our graduating class this year. Uh, before I give the, the commendations, I uh, just want to kind of give everybody a context of what this means and how wonderful an achievement this is for, for our students. Uh, this is a, a lengthy process. Uh, it began with 1.3 million uh, juniors who entered the contest. Uh, by taking the 2022 preliminary SAT and uh, PSAT, which served as the initial screener to the program enter entrance. The pool of semifinalists represented less than 1% of U.S. high school seniors who uh, all had some of the highest scoring entrance uh, scores in each state. To become a finalist, the finalists had to work with their school counselor to submit a detailed scholarship application, in which they provided information about their semifinalists academic record, participation in school and community activities, demonstrated leadership abilities, employment, honors, and awards. And the semifinalists must have an outstanding academic record throughout high school to be endorsed and recommended by the high school, write an essay, and earn an SAT or ACT score that confirms the student's earlier performance uh, on that qualifying PSAT test. Uh, of the 1.3 million juniors who started the process, only 15,000 are named National Merit Scholarship uh, Award winners. And each of the three individuals have the ability to earn scholarships of several thousand dollars uh, and also join a very elite group of high school graduates in the United States. So with me this evening, I have Aaron Walters, uh, along with his parents, George and Jennifer, and uh, two of our other students, Ian and Robert Rasul, uh, are both on the orchestra trip in Nashville, and it, they are enjoying themselves based on some of the texts I've seen. Uh, but uh, they, I am, uh, we are all lucky tonight to have the grandparents, Gerald and Sandra uh, Rasul. So with that said, Aaron, uh, commendation from the school board for your efforts. Whereas Aaron Walters has maintained exemplary performance in the following areas, academic proficiency, class standing, grade point average, standardized testing scores, as well as those in preparation for the pursuit of post high school education. Whereas Aaron has achieved the required selection index score, and whereas Aaron has completed the ideal essay submission, and whereas Aaron has met or exceeded all requirements set forth by the National Merit Scholarship Awards Program, it is resolved that the Board of Education, on behalf of the Southern New York County School District, adds its recognition, gratitude, and admiration for the way in which Aaron Walters has represented Susquehannock High School. His dedication, leadership, and success as a student will serve as a role model for others, given this day in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania on the 11th of April, 2024. Whereas Robert Razul has maintained exemplary performance in the following areas, academic proficiency, class standing, grade point average, standardized testing scores, as well as 
those in preparation for the pursuit of post high school education, whereas Robert has achieved the required selection index score, and whereas Robert has completed an ideal essay submission, and whereas Robert has met or exceeded all requirements set forth by the National Merit Scholarship Awards Program. It is resolved that the Board of Education, on behalf of the Southern New York County School District, adds its recognition, gratitude, and admiration for the way in which Robert has represented Susquehanna High School. His dedication, leadership, and success as a student will serve as a role model for others. Given this day in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania on the 11th of April, 2024. Whereas Ian Rasul has maintained exemplary performance in the following areas, academic proficiency, class standing, grade point average, standardized testing scores, as well as those in preparation for the pursuit of post high school education. Whereas Ian has achieved the required selection index score, and whereas Ian has completed an ideal essay submission, and whereas Ian has met or exceeded all requirements set forth by the National Merit Scholarship Program, Awards Program. It is resolved that the Board of Education on behalf of the Southern New York County School District, adds its recognition, gratitude, and admiration for the way in which Ian has represented Susquehanna High School. His dedication, leadership, and success as a student will serve as a role model for others. Given this day in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania on the 11th of April, 2024. Ian would like to thank everybody for the recognition and time this evening and appreciates all that he's been given by Southern New York County School District. Dr. Molly, can we have you come back up? And, oh, and sure. We, we missed a picture. I'm sorry. With Aaron. So. Yes. <laughs> One up. Cool. You want to get your award? <laughs> you don't have to hurry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> All right, um, moving on to 5.02, proposed budget presentation uh, by our CFO, Mr. Green. Good evening, everyone. So at our March 19th uh, Finance and Budget Committee meeting, uh, we gave a detailed presentation of the proposed budget for the 24-25 um, school year. We're just going to do a, a quick summary this evening of the budget for next year or the proposed budget for next year. Um, but we encourage um, those watching to uh, look at the whole presentation that is on our website um, if they want more information on the budget for next year. Um, so a summary of our budget, um, the entire budget, there's an increase to revenues of about 1.34% or $845,000, increase to expenditures of about $753,000 or 1.15%, um, so pr pretty low percentages. Um, one of re the reasons that it is is the um, federal funding is ending, um, and as we know, we use the federal funding for a lot of one-time um, expenditures um, because we knew, that, knew it was going to go away and, and fall off. Um, so that's why there is uh, not quite a very big um, increase in the budget next year. Um, our recommended tax rate is to be unchanged, so we do not have a tax increase in this budget. So um, we're very pleased to announce that. Um, and there are no big changes um, in the overall programming. So we have stable enrollment um, and stable programming for uh, the 24-25 budget. So some of the challenges that we addressed in this budget um, attracting and retaining staff. Um, we all know that there is a staff and teacher shortage out there. Um, we have that same, we have those same challenges here. So um, things that we are really focusing on is making sure that we do things um, to attract and keep the staff that we have. Um, so that has been a big focus of this budget. Um, another um, challenge for us is our health insurance. We have had quite a few years of very good health insurance um, changes. Uh, this year we um, have a very large increase of about 17 percent, so that was a challenge for the budget. Um, we always have the challenge of meeting the needs of all students in the appropriate environment. 
Uh, this is the time in the budget year that I always remind people that um, while we act like a business and we operate wherever we can like a business, we are not a business, we are a school. Um, we take every student and we meet the needs of each and every student. So um, that is always a challenge for us to make sure um, that we're meeting the needs of all of our students um, and doing what they need each and every day. Uh, the other challenge that we know, but sometimes people forget, um, so we may be meeting their needs there in kindergarten, um, but when they go to first grade, they have different needs and, and they just keep moving up each year into another grade level. So um, those needs change each year and we have to make sure as we're work, working through things um, that we're anticipating what they are for the upcoming years as we go along. And then as I said, we have the expiration of the federal funding. So making sure um, that we do with that federal funding, um, we're able to continue or, or transition off of those programs. So our major cost drivers, um, as I said, expenditures went up about $753,000, um, but a lot of that, um, we have about a decline of about $1.2 million. As I said, we try to use that federal funding for things that um, were one-time expenditures. So overall, our budget went up about $1.9 million on things that um, are going to continue. Um, so salaries, uh, we're a professional service organization, so one of the largest pieces is salaries, um, retirement, and medical insurance. Um, so our budget, about 70% is salaries and benefits. Um, so those are the large increase areas. Uh, student transportation, uh, we have a built-in increase of 5%. As we know, we're very fortunate to have our contract with First Student and our wonderful bus drivers. Um, we do very well in, in keeping and retaining um, our drivers uh, from year to year. And then liability insurance, um, if you read any news articles or, or even your own um, insurance bills are going up extensively um, with the insurance crisis that's going on. Um, so we have a, a large increase there also. So as I said, composition of our budget, we're a professional service organization, so it's pretty much salary and benefits um, for our staff because that's the main uh, portion of what we do. So our salaries are about 42% um, and about a million dollars of the increase overall when you remove that uh, ESER piece or that federal funding piece. Um, as far as staffing, we're about stable. I um, have about the same staff that we've had in the past. Uh, we have a reduction of a half-time hearing itinerant. Um, we had trouble, we had that in the budget for 23-24. Um, we had trouble finding a person, um, so we went with contracted services. That is working very well for us. Um, so um, we're gonna continue with those contracted services. Um, and then we also have one enrollment position um, in the budget for next year, because you never know um, who's gonna move in or move out um, throughout the summer. So we always make sure that we're, we're covered there. <coughs> so as I said, uh, the federal funding piece um, is a big piece. So as we walk through that, um, you know, we were very careful as we went into using that money over $4 million um, back when it came out that when it ended, um, that we would have a stable budget. So we were very, very um, pleased and proud to say um, that our budget is very stable for next year. Um, going to a, a conference at state level, um, I heard other districts where they have to have layoffs or reduced staffing um, because that money is going away. And we were just very cautious and very careful on how we use that so that we didn't have what's called like that fiscal cliff that you fall off when it goes away. So class size and student needs, um, that's one of the biggest things that we do as we put the budget together. Uh, we re review the staffing each year, um, classroom teachers and class sizes. So we look across the board from elementary to secondary on um, what our class sizes look like. Um, we look at where we need instructional specialists, um, where our special education classrooms are, and what supports are needed. So as I said before, um, when you're looking through the process, um, our children move from grade to grade each year. They move, may move from building um, to building. So um, as we're working through that, that's one of the big things that we sit down um, as a team of administrators to look at making sure that we're moving the resources um, to the appropriate places. So when we say that it's the same number of teachers and staff, they may not be exactly at the same grade level or in the same building, um, because as our children move through, we may need to move them to other areas. So we also have a lot students in other programs, um, so they're able to go to York School of Technology. Um, we have some programs that we do with other districts to meet student needs. Um, we have our digital academy, and then we have children that go to cyber charter programs. So that is also another big piece of our budget as we're working through um, what it looks like. So another piece we look at um, when we're making sure um, that we understand our budget is our staffing compared to our peers. So if you look at the average um, in our area, it's about 16.89 um, 
students per teacher. And if you go over to Southern, we're like the darker red. Um, we're, we're pretty much almost right on that line, um, a little bit lower uh, than average. So that's, that's something we look at very carefully to make sure um, that we understand our staffing and where we are um, in relation. Um, so then we'll go through, uh, so we have the expenditure side of the budget, now we'll go through the revenue side of the budget. Um, so overall, local revenue is about 3.3% increase. Um, we have increase in real estate assessment, um, so about 1%. Um, and as I said, the rate didn't change, but with buildings and things, um, and this is the time where I always kind of remind people, your assessment doesn't change. Um, it's really um, based not on market value, but on assessment. Um, it really only, the only thing that changes assessment is if we have new properties come on or people add a pool or a fence or, or things like that. Um, other changes are earned income tax, um, so that went up about 11.7%. And then interest earnings is the big piece. Um, well, our low is about $10,000 years ago. We're up over a million dollars in interest earnings, um, and we do um, look at that very carefully uh, to make sure we're getting as much money there as we can. So that went up about $380,000 in this budget. Some decreases, delinquent real estate, um, that goes up and down because um, basically you're either getting it, um, for us, you're either getting it in your current um, real estate taxes or you're getting it in delinquent. Um, we have very few properties that don't pay. Um, some other districts have that where they don't ever pay. We really don't have that. They're either paying current or they're pay paying delinquent. Um, State revenue, this is one of the reasons that we're able not to have a tax increase. Um, so we have been getting very robust um, state funding in the last couple years, um, and it's actually coming um, a little sooner than what we've seen it. Even though the budget's not passing um, until July, uh, we are seeing it sooner than we had uh, historically. So we're able to, to count on those numbers, um, and they're more realistic numbers than we had in the past. So our basic edu education funding um, is, is going up. Um, we have about 765,000, um, same with special education, about 158,000. So that is helping us um, to be able to not have that tax increase. And then some of the decreases, um, PCCD safety grants um, were higher in the state budget the year before, so um, they're, that's down a little bit. And then as I said, the big piece with um, federal revenue, um, that that ESER funding or COVID funding it is falling off and we're going back to our, our two main program, which is programs which are Title I and Title II. Um, so we're back down to about 1% um, for federal funding. We were during the, with the um, ESER funding or, or COVID funding, um, we were about three to 4% um, federal funding. We're back down to the 1%. Um, so our basis for no tax increase in summary um, is we were able to plan that use of the ESER funding um, and what was gonna happen when it was ends um, we do have that increased local funding and increased state funding, and it's reasonably known. Um, so that's a big difference in the state funding, too, is it being reasonably known. Um, we also have a change in our budget methodology, which I'll talk about briefly in a minute. Uh, we have that stable enrollment, and then um, we do have negotiated and approved professional staff contract. Um, because we were able to timely approve that in the fall, um, it's a lot easier to put the budget together when you know what 69% of your budget needs to be um, for salaries and benefits. So um, that, that's very helpful. Um, and then we also had positive 23, 24 results. Um, so we've been having a good year so far. Um, and we did not phase in additional um, millage for long-term capital projects because we're, we're gonna do another feasibility study and take a look at what our greatest needs are in the district. So um, at this time we're gonna we're going to pause and, and take a look at that. Um, so we're not adding an additional millage for that at this time. So our history of our tax increase, as you can see on the screen, um, in the last five years, um, previous to next year, um, we only had one tax increase. Um, so again, we're pleased to announce that we won't have one for next year. And this chart just briefly shows um, in our area, um, we have the lowest tax increase and, and we're not going up again next year. So. Again, our goal is always to only tax to what we need um, in order to, to balance our budget and, and run the operational program. Oops. And then, oops, somehow, I'm crazy. Okay, there we go. Um, so the one change that we made to our budget methodology, um, because of the um, shortage of staffing, um, we are running a surplus a little higher than what we have in the past. Um, because we do have some vacancies in, in different areas that we've not had in the past. Um, so we are, took a look at using fund balance in a little bit of different 
way. Um, so we're recommending use of fund balance to be set to not to exceed 1% of revenues and 3% of expenditures. Um, so what I always like to say is we can never spend 100% of the budget because Pennsylvania, you are not allowed to exceed your expenditures. It's illegal. Um, so we never want to get too close to that expenditure number. So um, we've um, changed our methodology um, to set it equal to this calculation, not to exceed $2.6 million. Okay, Kat, we got this clicker's not getting along. Okay, so this is just the summary showing um, what your revenues are, what your expenditures are, use of fund balance that I just explained, and that we balance the budget, which um, is a requirement that it balances. And then our next step this evening on the agenda um, is approval uh, to, of the proposed 24-25 uh, budget. Once that's approved, um, we will then um, advertise and post it um, for the public to review um, with the idea that it would be approved at the May 16th um, board meeting. Um, so the board um, will receive an update if we have any at that time. Um, then it will be finally improved. And at that time is when we'll know when the Homestead Farmstead um, amounts are determined. And if for some reason something were to change and there would be a tax increase included, the tax rate will be set at that time. So what I always like to say is the budget can change between now and May. Um, it does not have to stay the same. Um, we don't predict that that will happen, but I always like to point that out. Any questions? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> moving on to item 5.03, uh, educational updates by Dr. Ruppert. Thank you, President Nagel. Uh, good evening, school board. Uh, so thankful that the warmer weather is finally here. Spring is here. Hope everyone had a restful and enjoyable break. Uh, now that we're heading down the home stretch of school, and uh, do apologize for not being here last month to give my uh, uh, update. Dr. Bryson, you did okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so to kind of follow in the theme that uh, we have utilized, or I've utilized over the, the last two years, uh, starting off with the safety, our school continues to prioritize the safety in relation to the rehearsal of drills while promoting situation awareness. It's important you know, for all of our students and parents to practice this even when you're out in public, uh, being uh, aware of what your surroundings are to be safe. And now that it's a lot warmer weather, please be safe as your parents and students as you're out there driving. Students are out there playing outside uh, just to make sure you keep a cautious eye of those balls coming out in the street or whatever it may be, so that we can make sure uh, we maintain safety as our number one priority. Uh, under supportive, I want to congratulate some students, uh, Jacob Iwanowitz, Harrison Mabon, uh, Ian and Robert Rosul, and Chloe Warner for the performance at the Central Region Orchestra concert uh, that was last month, um, as well as Harrison Mabon, who qualified for the All-State Orchestra Festival uh, by playing fourth out of 16 in first violins. Harrison will be attending the All-State Festival in Erie, Pennsylvania on April 17th through Saturday, April 20th. Uh, this is a great, uh, uh, great accomplishment for Harrison, so congratulations to him. Uh, under collaboration, I uh, wanted to take a moment to thank all the staff members in our operations department, maintenance and custodial staff. Uh, they have just an amazing job uh, with their fields, getting them ready for the spring competition and our buildings continue to look immaculate. And, uh, you know, another plug, I just want to say out a big thank you to them. I know that we're going to be in a big process of another move uh, from the administration, administrative offices uh, back over to the Thomas R. Hensley administration building. Uh, and I know they'll be very uh, pivotal in making that. So I want to thank them ahead of time as we're getting ready for that move. Um, and under another collaboration, a big thanks, thank you out to Mrs. Worley. Uh, at the high school, uh, teaches the EMT class on Friday. Our students, as well as our high school principal, Dr. Mullen, had the opportunity for some authentic opportunities of car extractions. Uh, they had EMTs uh, you know, from the local municipalities out uh, behind the old uh, cafeteria. And it was just an amazing opportunity to see that collaboration and the ability for our future EMTs to be trained with that. Uh, just a couple of reminders. Well, there's a lot. Uh, we have a choral concert for elementary that's coming up next Wednesday. Uh, eighth grade formal dance at the middle school is Friday the 19th. Um, as Carolyn mentioned, we are going to be rolling in our testing season. Uh, we got the ELA PSSAs 
uh, from grades three through eight. That'll be starting in April uh, 22nd, uh, followed by the math and science the week after that. A uh, bunch of concerts coming up. The high school spring band concert will be the 24th of April. And Carolyn, when you were talking about the district's annual art tech fair, that's going to be on Thursday, April 25th uh, at 5 p.m. in the Commons. So it's going to be a great opportunity for everybody to come in and see the great work of our students in the, the Commons of the high school. Uh, the schools will be closed on Friday the 26th. Uh, if you like jazz music, please come out to uh, Shrewsbury Elementary on the 27th at 6 p.m. for an awesome competition where there will be jazz bands from around the county um, as well as one professional jazz band that will be uh, headlining uh, the, the final show there. All right, I'm going to take a breath. Uh, we have a couple primary grade music concerts, first grade and second grade, which will be on the 30th and the May 1st. Uh, we have a choral concert for the high school and middle school on May 2nd. Teacher Appreciation Week. Okay, uh, it's called Teacher Appreciation Week, but Dr. Bryce and I call it Staff Appreciation uh, because we have a lot of uh, people that we don't want to be excluded. So uh, that is the week of May 6th. So uh, please take an opportunity to thank a teacher, staff member for all they, uh, all they do. Uh, and don't just limit it to that week. Um, you know, you can do it anytime throughout the school year. Uh, but those, uh, those positive things do go a long way for, uh, for our staff. Uh, we have a couple more concerts, Nights of Wind concert on May 6th. Um, elementary school board recognition. Uh, this is an opportunity that uh, our elementary students will be recognized for their accomplishments. That will be on Tuesday, May 7th in the high school auditorium. Scholarship night uh, will be coming up on May 9th. And uh, the spring uh, sixth grade Warrior Cadet concert, May 13th. And middle school band concert will be on the 15th. We have a lot in this little bit of time, but it's the end of the school year. We try to pack everything in. So, you know, have a great rainy uh, month of April and await the flowers of May or not. Mm -hmm. This is yours. Thank you, Dr. Rupert. All right, uh, moving on to 6.01, uh, public comment. Uh, I'll just remind you when you come up for public comment, please uh, state your name, your municipality of, refer uh, of residence. Um, and uh, you'll, you'll have five minutes. Um, that'll be up on the board. Um, and then um, just a reminder to please observe proper decorum while speakers are speaking, um, both in your, own, in your own comment as well as while other people are speaking. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, Val Dennis. My name is Val Brown Dennis and I'm a resident of Shrewsbury Township. Thank you for giving me time to share ideas. I'm speaking today from a perspective that includes K-12 certification in music, library and information science, and education administration. April is School Library Month in the United States. To each of us in this room and out there in YouTube land, please make the time to thank our school librarians. A short email will do. School librarians training and work with books, reading, information literacy, digital and tech literacy, media literacy, research, education technology, curriculum, create positive impacts on students, school staff, and communities. I will continue to be at the Mason-Dixon Diner at 7 o'clock on Tuesdays to listen and talk about education. While social media has its place and isn't going away, I believe we are far more likely to support our students with in-person conversation. I could also show up at your workplaces and home offices next week in order to observe your work. And that would be very awkward. Um, there is talk about observing teachers and students. During my first year of teaching, I was observed 18 times by school administrators at the three schools where I taught music, based on standard procedures for new teachers. I knew these leaders and their guidance was useful. My students and I would have been deeply anxious about having someone we didn't know show up in our classrooms to watch us. Teaching and learning does not occur at the same time as anxiety. My assumption, and I could be wrong, is that the discussion around unannounced visits by school board members is to look for evidence of issues in public schools. Harassment, marginalized peoples, diversity, climate change, sex education, health classes, books, curriculum, and more. I would suggest that we choose instead to make the time to build respect and trust with our students, teachers, staff, and families. We do this primarily by listening. 
and then asking about their experiences and ideas. Do we have the courage to ask marginalized families about their experiences here? I hope so, because public schools welcome everyone, just like the all are welcome signs on many churches in our area. There is also discussion about additional legal counsel. We can use the law to change what we think needs to be changed. And we can talk about the challenges of public education before we jump to law as the means to change. I have experienced perpetual change in public education, professional development known as PD, leading school improvement teams, on teams to build new schools, on middle states accreditation teams in the mid-Atlantic states, taking university classes on teaching and learning until I was 50 years old, and most of all, the impact of perpetual societal changes on education. Teaching requires constant learning. I wish every adult would substitute teach at least one day in their lives. After fingerprinting, background checks, and about two days of videos on school policy and law. Often assumptions and reality are very different things in public schools. My assumption, and I could be wrong, is that the intent of additional legal counsel for the school system is to provide guidance on moving forward with book censorship, curriculum changes, and policy changes. As for book censorship, I was a high school librarian for 20 years, and I had the career joy of building a library in a new high school from scratch. What I will say now is that I am 100% convinced that the removal of a book will not prevent some teens from being sexually active, will not prevent some teens from being part of the LGBTQ plus community. Removing a book will not harm white male students to learn more about the experiences, history, and contributions of women and non-white people in the United States of America. Is it important to talk about and work together on all of these instead of removing books or curriculum? Yes, it is. And I have nothing against white males. I like them very much. My dad, my husband, our sons, our brand new grandson. It's just that there are other people here in our community and country also. Each day, let's continue to make opportunities to listen and to talk with each other. Thank you. All right, um, Katie Weber Poe. I'm Katie Weber Poe, and I'm from Glen Rock. Uh, the arguments some board members presented at the last meeting in regard to the proposed unrestricted visitation policy were very disorganized and rather concerning. When so many poorly organized logical fallacies are used, it indicates to me that I am dealing with an intent to manipulate and misdirect. Further learning that you are going to engage a serv the services of a right-wing legal firm, the Independence Legal Counsel, as free legal counsel, has increased my concern. I am worried that this firm will use our district for their own political end. It is known that this group has an interest in changing the establishment clause of the Constitution prohibiting the government from, forming, uh, from establishing a state religion. ILC has been developing book bans, anti-LGBTQ plus policies, and pushing abstinence-only education in schools, in school districts across Pennsylvania. They're doing this in order to drum up lawsuits, most of which they know they will lose, leaving taxpayers in these districts to foot the bill while they slink away. This tactic is intended to test the legal system with the goal of eventually going before the Supreme Court to challenge the safeguards in our Constitution. I want to be clear. The ILC will use our kids as fodder for their benefit. They will sow further disruption in our community and advocate for harmful policies. This will lead to lawsuits against the district, which will result in our taxpayers footing the bill. Members of this board are acting in bad faith. Their actions have already placed this district at risk. Since the resurrection of the racist mascot, our district has been issued a warning from the NAACP. They've failed to take meaningful actions to address their own racist action in the resurrection of the mascot. 
and they haven't made any meaningful efforts to address systemic racism in our school. Instead, the board chooses to further lean into offensive behavior by abusing the trust of the district and using their positions for their own political agenda. As I'm hearing reports come in, um, or reports surface of a financial relationship between the National Hate Group Family Research Council and some members on the board. I'm also hearing um, where board members are reportedly uh, disrupting educational time with, with Family Research Council surveys during sexual education classes. This behavior is highly suspect. It, le it leaves the board and the district open to litigation and is irresponsible. Furthermore, I must point out that the actions of this board do not meet up with the words spoken from your mouths. In my book, that equates deception. And as I'm putting all these pieces together, it's something I do as a therapist. Uh, I look at all the moving parts to see how motivations are driving people to what actions and to what end. And honestly, I'm a little chilled to the bone where we're going. I've seen other districts go through this. I've, I've worked with kids who've gone to Central and their heartbreak and pain over book bans and, LGBT, and anti-LGBTQ policies. Personally, I'm a little, I'm extremely concerned about uh, abstinence-only education. Uh, previously, I worked as a sexual assault advocacy, actually ran an advocacy program for sexual assault survivors. And the heartbreaking times in which I've had to explain to young women what sex was after a violent attack because they had absence-only education and that they were educated in such a way that they weren't even told what their body parts were is horrifying. And I will not stand by and let our children experience that same harm. Ashley Morrison. I'm Ashley Morrison, Shrewsbury. Um, I wrote all of you a few months back to discuss my concerns about the all access at all times requests made during the December meeting regarding school board visits to the schools. Although I may not agree with all the responses I received, I do want to acknowledge and thank those of you who were able to be honest in your answers without getting defensive or accusatory. That being said, after the first reading of the proposal last month, I now have greater concerns regarding this request. According to the first reading, each school board member is allowed two visits per week, up to half a day for each visit. While not all board members might take advantage of this policy, with nine board members and five schools, each school could end up with unplanned visits covering three to four days a week. Allowing for multiple unplanned visits each week does not provide a conducive learning environment for teachers, students, or staff. No matter the intention of these visits, it will be disruptive to classes. At the last meeting, the idea of a survey to teachers and staff was pr proposed. I was glad to hear this, as I believe it is imperative that a survey should be provided so that we can better understand whether teachers believe that unplanned visits by school board members are viewed as a supportive measure. This survey should be anonymous and be comprised of unbiased and specific questions pertaining to the proposed new policy so there can be an accurate assessment of the teachers and staff input. I would also recommend a comment section in which teachers can provide additional feedback on how they can be supported. As addressed during the last meeting, there's already a protocol in place in which board members may visit a school if they choose to do so. I have not yet heard valid reasons why this protocol needs to be revised so that board members may show up unannounced and without contacting the school's principal and with such frequency. A couple of reasons and examples were provided by the board last month. One mentioned that an unannounced visit without contacting the principal would allow teachers to discuss issues they have with the school environment or administration with a school board member. I immediately started wondering how likely this situation was to arise. After all, for anyone who knows a teacher, I'm married to one, we know they rarely have spare time with their day, or if they do, they're often helping students or catching up on lesson plans or grading. Second, I can't think of any profession in which someone would seek outside support because they have issues at work and then ask to meet at their place of employment, especially considering there are other outlets available, email, phone call, even meeting outside the school. 
Another example provided for the necessity of the revised protocol is that if a board member randomly gets a half day off from work, they can stop by the school. Once again, my immediate thought was, how often does this scenario occur that it justifies revamping the current protocol? While I do not doubt that our teachers and staff would be able to professionally and skillfully handle these unannounced visits, that doesn't mean that they would be welcomed or provide a productive and positive outcome. If we truly want to support and retain our teachers, as well as provide a conducive learning environment for our students, then I think there needs to be additional input from teachers and staff before the revised policy is considered for approval and implemented. I still have a little bit of time, so um, share a story why my son, my eight-year-old son wanted to know why I'm gonna miss bedtime tonight. And I told him that I was here because school board members want to just be able to show up at said, I mean, I can, I can be flexible if I have to, but if they're there that long, it, it's going to be really hard for me to concentrate, and it's going to be, and I'm going to get distracted. So I, didn't, I simply told him, and that, that's what he told me last night when he wanted to know why I wouldn't be at bedtime tonight. So, thank you. Megan Gilbert. Good evening, I am Megan Gilbert. I live in New Freedom. I have three children at Susquehannock High School. Two of them will graduate, I learned from Caroline, in 42 days. And my third child is, uh, will be a senior next year. I am incredibly proud of my children. Allow me to brag for a second. Um, my seniors are college bound. They have received scholarships. They've been accepted into honors colleges. But most important to me, they have chosen careers and futures where they want to make the world a better place for everyone. My husband and I joke that the reason our children are so successful is that we are amazing parents, and we will definitely take some of the, the credit for that. Uh, but the truth is we did not do this alone. They worked very hard, and the school district, the teachers here, the administrators, their fellow students, like Caroline, who has gone to school with them since kindergarten, they deserve a lot of the credit too. And to all of you who have played a role in the success that my children are experiencing right now, please accept my sincere gratitude. My husband and I moved here 17 years ago in large part because of the school district. And as I said, it has delivered on our expectations. I know others have not had the same experiences that my children have had, and it breaks my heart. When I hear mothers speak about what their children have experienced, the racism that their families have experienced. I deeply regret not paying more attention to that issue. And I stand here ready and willing to work with this community and this school district to make it better for all children here so that all children can have the experiences that my children had. I have a responsibility as a member of this community who benefited so much from these schools to make that happen for others. So this is my offer to work with anyone here to make this school district a place where every child can succeed, can feel safe, can feel welcomed, and get the support that they need to thrive. So when I look at some of the actions of this school board and some members of this school board, I have to say that I am alarmed. One of your first actions was to bring back a divisive logo, one that a Native American family in our district said was harmful to them. Then you introduced a policy about unannounced visits, claiming you want teacher approval and input, but that is not included in the policy. And now we have the Independence Law Center on the agenda. You haven't explained yet why you want to hire them, but we all know what they do. They write policies on book bans, anti-LGBTQ plus policies, and imposing their own brand of Christian nationalism in public schools. So when I say I want to work towards making the school a welcoming place for everyone, this is the opposite of that. I can only imagine what parents of children who identify with the LGBTQ community are thinking and wondering what this will mean 
for the safety and well-being of their children in the school district. I can only imagine what teachers are thinking about their ability to prepare our students to be productive citizens when a school board wants to enter their classroom without notice and wants to hire a law firm that helps school boards ban books. I also think about the families in the position that my husband and I were in 17 years ago and deciding where they wanted to live. When they are looking at the actions of this board, we don't seem to be focused on solving real issues, such as the racism in this district, retaining high quality teachers, making sure our children are prepared for a rapidly changing world. Will they choose to live here? We just saw a budget proposal and we depend on people wanting to live here. I know some people want to live in their bubble and they only want to have people around them who think just like them. I am tempted sometimes, but that is not realistic and I don't think that should be our goal. I encourage all of you, I'm asking all of you to really start listening to the people who are living here, who come here, really consider what we are saying, and a lot less on those outside sources who may be funding your campaigns before we lose everything in this school district that people worked so very hard to build. Thank you. Natalie Borer. Natalie Bohr, you free to? All right, tonight I want to propose a couple different things. Um, I can come up here and talk about racial bullying and discrimination until I'm blue in the face. Um, one of the books of Mice of Men, yeah, we've discussed this a while back. Um, I'm not for book banning, you can leave it in the library, but I'm wondering if we can come up with an alternate book, something like The Alchemist. I don't know if anybody's ever read that. Um, Something that will actually open the minds, teach kids to follow their dreams, go through obstacles, some life lessons, per se. Um, so then the second part of it is, is, so we have culture night. And we do it on the different campuses, right? So teachers struggle. They stress, try and get this done for everybody to come out and enjoy it. And I know when my kids were in elementary, going to art night, it was kind of like a fly by my night, like fly by my, oh, I can't talk, sorry. <laughs> fly by minute moment. Because you're shoulder to shoulder with everyone. It's, it's a lot, right? It's chaos. Um, parents, in the evening, they're coming home, they're getting dinner, then we're going to the school. So I'm wondering, um, what about doing a culture event in New Freedom? Um, Shrewsbury Park wouldn't be adequate, uh, Glen Rock, but New Freedom Park's been redone. There's ample parking. Maybe get with the mayor, do a culture fest. Um, you know, we're right between Baltimore and Harrisburg. There's multiple food trucks for authentic food. Um, I spoke with Katie and briefly Erica earlier. Um, you know, they would be up to doing a little powwow, um, maybe have come some traditional other dancers come in from other cultures. Um, to like a dunk booth, just, I mean, the ideas are all, you know, obviously endless. But to involve the community in general, when people eat and they break bread with people, dialect opens up. And you tend to talk to more people than what you would sitting in a gym, shoulder to shoulder, listening to a speaker, which speakers are great, you know. Um, but I'm thinking about something family friendly. You know, something on a Saturday where people aren't rushing around and they can enjoy it. Have the culture club set up little different booths. Um, kids can go through them and answer little questions, maybe get a ticket for a free treat. Um, again, the ideas are endless, but I think that rather than putting all the pressure on the teachers and the schools to try and make these nights happen for everyone, why not bring it together as a community? Um, I think the community would benefit from it. Uh, we're growing as a community. I just think it would be a really good idea. Um, and then like, you know, do the, say that we do that in the fall or the spring. Um, and then to do another event where it's mental health, suicide, suicide awareness, <coughs> um, drugs, um, anything along that line, bullying, discrimination, uh, have outside agencies come in, True North, uh, PA counseling services, set up booths. Sometimes parents don't know where to reach out to um, if their kid is struggling. I don't know how many parents have came up to me and were like, where did you get services for your son when he was so young? I have a son that they used to, used to be known as Asperger's. It's autism, level one, level two. 
And I've educated a lot of parents in the area just on where to start with services. And I think having a mental health like event and a family friendly event in the community would be extremely beneficial as well. Um, and that's just a couple of ideas that I had. Uh, and that's what I wanted to bring up as a proposal tonight, just to make it more of a community involved event. We have the Lions Club, we have all these new businesses. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much what I have tonight. Um, that and maybe trying to find a different alternative to that book. Um, but I think that would be a good idea. Uh, sometimes we don't always have the means of transportation to get to A to B or to come to the school events out here on campus. And it's a blessing our campus is always extremely busy, but it would be hard to hold some type of an event for everyone to come to at the high school to accommodate everyone. So thanks. Thank you. Leanna Fieser. Leanna Fieser, Shrewsbury Township. Last month, a proposal for a new policy regarding director-initiated school visits was announced. Note that Mr. Henkel did say in that meeting that, quote, the current policy doesn't prevent any ability to gather information on the school environment, end quote. Nevertheless, the board seeks to give itself permission to engage in multiple ways that come across as less than sound in their reasoning and as a general overreach of the board's power. The policy states that board members should coordinate in advance before initiating a visit to minimize potential disruptions to the educational environment, ensure the timing and structure of the visit allows for the best opportunity to observe the desired activity program or condition, and confirm that the date and time is not prohibited under the policy. But in the very same sentence, you give yourselves permission to completely ignore all those reasons. The policy states that a visit may not be used as opportunity for a director to conduct his or her own investigation of allegations of misconduct or improper behavior by staff members or students. Yet, one reason given for needing these visits was to listen to interactions with students in light of testimony given during public comment so that you can see for yourselves. As if the students and parents who speak here cannot be believed and that students wouldn't change their behavior in front of you. The policy states that a director may not interfere with or otherwise disrupt classroom routines. Perhaps the board isn't aware that unplanned deviations from normal expectations can be wildly disruptive to students with IEPs and 504s or how difficult it can be to recover from that kind of distraction. The policy allows for a total of 18 visits by board members per week. I guess that should cover all the planned secret lunch meetings with teachers. The teachers this policy is supposedly meant to aid who were not actually consulted in the formation of this policy. The teachers who have no fear of being caught because woke and subsequently losing their jobs because you're definitely not there to investigate anything. The teachers who have made it abundantly clear that they do not support this part of your policy. And in this policy, you give yourselves permission to speak with students unsupervised. Well, let me be clear. You do not have permission to speak to my children without a teacher or principal present. Honestly, I don't want some of you speaking to my children even when their teacher is present. And this isn't just me. You push this line through and you will have many, many, many parents putting no contact rules in place. A look that will be just great for our district. I mean, the reinstatement of the old logo and your intention to hire the Independence Law Center tonight shows how little you care about how our district looks. But sure, let's keep adding to the bad press. Everybody loves when our property values take a dive, am I right? As, Mr. Dauberman, as Mrs. Dauberman so plainly and bravely put it last month, nothing I say matters. You'll do whatever you want because you can, as long as it benefits you and your political ambitions. Quote, one school board at a time, one county at a time, one state at a time. We need to start at a lower level and work our way up. We all know that it's nationwide, end quote. Southern York County's needs be damned. It's not about us or students or teachers. It's all about you. Mrs. Gilbert, you wondered how, how parents of LGBTQ students feel about the ILC? Fucking terrified. That's how we feel. Uh, I think it was um, Mrs. Poe, you wondered 
what good reasons they have for things. They have no good reasons for this policy. In the absence of good reasons, what kind of reasons do we have left? I have here a petition signed by 70 middle, met, blah, 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 70 mid, middle school students in protest of your plan to have unannounced, unsupervised visits. That's 70 middle school students in one day. Mrs. Kopp has over 175 parent signatures. That's, a, again, in protest of your thing. That's over the course of a couple days with very little effort. We can put in a lot more effort and get a lot more signatures to show you how wildly unacceptable people find this idea. We would like it to not go that far. Please reconsider the wording of your policy and your intentions with it. Thank you. Lou Vernon. Hi, it's Lou Burnett, Shrewsbury, PA. I'm here tonight to express my concerns about the proposed new policy that would allow board members to have unrestricted access to school buildings without first notifying the principal. Not only is this a waste of time and resources spent on having the solicitor draw up a new policy, but you are neglecting the fact that there is already a policy in place to have any board member visit any school with approval and notifying the corresponding principal. And I'm going to try to be as pragmatic as possible. Allowing the board members to show up unannounced would make our staff, especially our cherished educators, feel like they are not trusted by this administration. This can lead to an unproductive and uncomfortable environment for teaching and learning. As a regular volunteer at my child's school, I understand that I cannot enter a classroom without permission. Board members should be held to the same standard. The rationale of wanting to get a better feel for the environment, as was stated last month in schools, is misguided. Board members are not regular volunteers, and their presence can be a distraction to both teachers and students. Not a single board member holds a degree in education, so you would be completely unqualified to give opinions or judgments on classroom matters. If you want to gather information about the school and the environment, then email the teachers, set up a conference or a meeting but not during classroom time. You should not be interrupting their daily routines. I eagerly await the results from the third party survey that will be given to teachers, instructional assistants, and hopefully office staff to gather their opinions and feedback on what is best for the children. I believe that the majority of our valued teachers would not approve of such an egregious overstep on the board's part. I hope that the board listens to the concerns of the parents who have spoken last month and this month um, and the signed petitions that are going uh, against this new policy. You say that you are voted by the people, but if you knowingly ignore the voices of disapproval, you are acting and voting solely on your behalf and any hidden agendas that may currently lie dormant and disregarding the best interests of the children in our district. Let me repeat it for everyone, here and online. We currently have a policy for any board member to visit any school upon approval and notification. And that is all I have to say. Brian Kopp. Good evening, Dr. Bryson, Dr. Ruppert. And uh, let me thank the other uh, teachers, educational professionals, staff, support staff that are constantly 
working really hard uh, for our kids. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Um, like another parent here tonight, my kids have experienced just fantastic success in our school system. Um, I've got two years left in the school system. However, um, I'm a little concerned. And Sir, make your comments from the podium. Why is that? Because they can't be picked up on the uh, microphone. Sir, okay. Okay. go to the podium now. Excuse me? Go to the podium now. That is the place for you to make your comments. want somebody looking over your shoulder to read your notes. I don't understand then why you've put forward this idea that you should be able to come into the schools and oversee the teachers and oversee the students and the staff whenever you want. That made you very uncomfortable. It was really obvious. How do you think that's going to make teachers feel, Nathan? How do you think that's going to make kids feel? What are you tapping your hammer for? What are you tapping your hammer for? i got three minutes. You're going to listen. For them to be quiet while you're speaking. Here's what I want to know. Why do you want access to our schools and our kids without supervision. You know what I think? I think it's freaking creepy. I, coming, I'm going to tell you a story real quick. Coming out of the polls three years ago when Mary Lee was a candidate. Point of order. I'm going to tell the truth and a true story. No, I'm sorry. You're not allowed to slander board members. I'm not. Uh, the truth is slander? We're not. Is, we're not how is the truth. How is you telling? You addressed your comments to me. Excuse me? You addressed your comments to me. I will address and my comments to the board and to the public and to anybody I choose to, sir. Thank board you. policy is you, that you address your comments to the chair. Great. Chair, sir, I'm going to tell you a story. When I was at the polls three years ago, something, when Mary Lee uh, was running, something happened to me that made me not want some of you in the schools with our kids and our teachers. Do you want to know what it was? I was threatened, of, uh, threatened violence by one of the current board members. Sit down. This has already been established as false. Sit down. You are no longer allowed to speak. His time is over. It was, it was if your time is over by Mary Lee. Sir, please. Sierra Watts. If I catch out, if I catch you please take in him the away bathroom now. or a classroom with my kid, thank you. Sierra Y. Mr. President, is it possible that we could give a minute or two? Mrs. Wire, are you are you okay? Yeah, do you need? Okay. I don't want you to have good? to recalibrate yeah. oh, I'm, I'm okay to speak now it's not good you, yeah sorry it's fine <laughs> it's fine I'm okay to speak now CRY Shrewsbury all right please do not re please do not reference my children and other children facing traumatic experiences during a school day to use an as an excuse to, or example to gain access to into schools unannounced and unsupervised This can cause anxiety and distraction to students having unfamiliar adults in their presence. We all know that the seven real conservative school board members are going to vote to move forward with this policy. 
change to allow school board directors and members to enter the school buildings and offices unannounced and unsupervised, despite the majority of the school and community who do not want this policy change. I feel there is a hidden agenda for the policy change. Number one, you already know what's occurring in the school board, in the school districts, in the school district and in the buildings. Number two, I feel as, an, as new board members, it would be a softer approach to continue with the presence of administ administrators or the superintendent to ensure students feel safe and comfort under the current policy. School board directors does, do not have permission to speak with my children without my presence. And I know other parents that have the same request. Also, after all students are minors, and it is our parental rights. Also, several parents have voiced their concerns regarding frequent, frequently disturbing teachers, students, and principals with these unannounced visits. You all, have, you all may have your clearances, but your agenda does not sit well with me. So, I'm sorry. Just like you would not want people from other races, religion, and sexual orientation coming to observe your children unvetted. When the, full, the former board was in place, many of you challenged and dis disputed many agenda items and said the board didn't listen to you. Well, I don't see a difference with this board. Despite the community, I don't see a difference with this board. You do what you want despite hearing from the community and from students. In the last few months, there hasn't been much or if any public comments in support of the actions you are taking. And it's not because they are afraid to speak out. There is, there is an action item tonight to approve changes to the school handbooks and, and the public does not know what the changes are. This is the same criticism you gave the former board. With all the negative press, you have the audacity to retain the controversial independent law center. This is another hidden agenda driven action that has nothing to do with student success, mental health of teachers or students, teacher recruitment and retention or improving school climate. I leave you with this anonymous quote. Power is not a means, it is an end. Peggy Cobb. Right, Peggy Cobb, New Freedom Borough. Tonight, the board is reading their proposed policy regarding scheduled and unscheduled school director visits to all buildings in our school district. And I represent tonight not only my own point of view, but that of almost 200 community members that include Democrats, Republicans, independents, right, who have signed and continue to sign a position as a show of discontent regarding the proposed policy 012. I said at the last meeting, and I continue to maintain, that this new policy is unnecessary as school directors, as already mentioned, already have the right to visit the schools when they wish under policy 9.07, which is the same policy that guides school director visits in all York County schools. The biggest change that this new policy proposal brings is allowing school directors to visit all buildings in our school district unannounced, which is called in the policy school director initiated visits rather than unscheduled board visits, which is what they are. These visits specifically do not require a school director to schedule a visit in advance and in coordination with the building principal, which means that a director can choose to stop, drop by in anywhere at any time for any reason outlined in the policy, which includes to observe the educational program. The language specifically does not bar a school director from dropping in on teachers unannounced, as we've already heard this evening, at any time during their lunch, their planning, or while they're teaching a class. The proposed new policy also allows, as we've heard already, unannounced and unsupervised visits up to two times per week per director for up to half a day, which is about three hours. With nine directors on our board, the math has already been done. 
That means our school staff could be subjected to up to 18 visits per week or 54 hours of school director visitation time per week. I've been teaching for 32 years. That's unprecedented. The proposed policy is without a doubt a breach of trust in our teachers, our administrators, and our staff on the part of the school directors proposing the policy. It has absolutely every potential to lower morale across the school system and ultimately to cause good teachers and good administrators to seek employment in a system where they're trusted and valued, not mistrusted and policed. I'm going to again reiterate that while our school board directors have been legitimately elected to their position, not one of them is a certified educator. Not one of them has a training to conduct skilled observations and evaluations of an educational program. And in addition, the board members supporting this policy have not made the case to a large portion of the SYCSD community as to why such an unprecedented change in policy is needed other than the claim of wanting to help teachers and get a better feel for the environment. Believe me, if you want to help teachers, ensure that they have the planning time they need to do their jobs. Provide them with tuition reimbursement so they can stay up to date with current best practices in education. Purchase the materials they need to implement good quality in curriculum. Create policies that build an environment of respect and prior towards the safety and the individual rights of all students and staff. Parents, send them children who are respectful and curious. Do not subject them to unneeded gotcha moments by roaming the buildings at unexpected times up to 18 times per week and making them feel constantly watched and on edge at their place of work. You suggested at the last meeting the use of the third party survey, in addition to the end of year climate survey to gauge the opinions of teachers and staff to this proposal, yet there's no mention of that survey in tonight's agenda. You owe it to the excellent teachers to ask for and to listen to their voices. Make the survey happen. I would also add that the proposed policy does not include protocol for after a school board director visit, which is not something we've heard this evening. In the Dallas Town Area School District Director Handbook, it specifically states that school directors should provide the full board with a verbal report about the visit at the end of a subsequent board meeting. There is no such stipulation for transparency in the proposal being read this evening. This is especially concerning given that the board is seeking tonight to take action on retaining the legal counsel of the notorious Independent Law Center, which offers to help conservative school directors draft proposals that routinely target the individual rights of LGBTQ students, books and school libraries, and which was involved in helping the Dover Area School District add intelligent design or creationism to their science curriculum some 20 years ago. It's no secret that the ILC is the legal arm of the PA Family Institute, which seeks to bring their own brand of conservative Christian beliefs into the Pennsylvania public school system, district by district. Will the observations made by our school directors during their up to three hour, two time per week visits be shared with the ILC legal team to draft future morally and legally controversial policies that leave our system open to anti-discrimination lawsuits? Will our district be left settling a lawsuit for millions of dollars like the Dover Area School District had to do to remove intelligent design from their science curriculum? The IC may offer their policy drafting services pro bono, but they do not offer to defend the school system adopting their policies for free. <coughs> Thank you. Rachel Zeleny. Rachel Zeleny, uh, Shrewsbury Township. I've seen a lot of people uh, saying that you don't need a job or a degree in education to see what's happening in schools. And maybe not, but understanding why things are happening and what might actually help, that degree sure does help. Let me explain. I didn't have an education degree when I began teaching. I was an emergency certified teacher. It means that I was immediately thrown into a classroom without having one class in education. I had a master's degree in English, which proved to be tissue paper, in helping me manage a room of 35 students six times a day. Kids repeatedly threw oranges at my head. My room was chaos. I was collecting things, but I was writing them. How does that happen? Okay. Um, I didn't know how to use the copier. By October, I had gone to four funerals. One boy was shot walking his younger brother to the bus stop. A group of girls made a suicide pact and all three hung themselves. I cried in the parking lot every morning. My husband and I had just started dating at this time. Every day I'd meet him for a walk and vent. Everything's out of control. They're out of control. I have no support. I can't do this. If I could just suspend this kid or that kid, I need a tranquilizer dart. He looked at me and said, 
Well, your ambitions of being scary probably aren't going to work. You're five foot tall. Second, your entire way of thinking about discipline will never work. I rolled my eyes. In an ideal world, he said, instead of detention or suspension, we'd make the parents come to school with their kid the next day. The parent would be responsible for watching their kid's behavior and getting the, the kid getting their work done. It would be their responsibility, and then it would hopefully translate into more accountability at home. He's pretty sure this wouldn't get any buy-in, but he still thinks it would be the best system. So instead, he said, you need to understand that consequences like suspension never really work. What happens when the kids comes back after missing material? They're even more disruptive than before because they are behind. And who do you think it falls on to provide them with the missed work and the missed instruction? Right, you got it, he said looking at me. So instead he explained classroom management is student engagement. Discipline issues are easily managed or reduced when students feel like they have a connection to the teacher, when students understand the material, and when students are engaged. I said, okay, what does that look like? He said, I'm going to come and watch you tomorrow. Okay. Well, he sat in with me for the day. And at that point, I already loved him, and it was still terrifying. Afterwards, we debriefed. Well, your first period kids are hungry, he said. Your demographics indicate that most of the students who walk into your classroom don't get to eat breakfast. Put a box under your desk with granola bars or whatever they say they'll eat. Don't care about whether it's healthy. Take their word for whatever they will eat. Put a doormat at your front door. Their shoes to them are precious. They don't care about any of the other clothes that they're wearing, just their shoes. They're spending half their time in the back of your room cleaning their shoes instead of paying attention to you. Use the doormat. Find a mentor who could help you design lesson plans that are going to engage everyone in the room and not just the kids who learn easily. Find your best paraprofessional and see if you can have that person in your room to help. Make phone calls home to parents, especially that one, that one, and that one, and he pointed out the three. And make good phone calls home. Tell their parents what you see in terms of their potential. Do this before you do any other kind of phone call. Attend their after school events. He told me three TV shows I should be watching to relate to them, and 10 books that I needed to be reading so I know what they were talking about. I want to say that I went to an interview yesterday at York Country Day with a young black man who was considering working there. I said, did you look at Susquehanna's position? He said, I did. I said, I'm really sorry. <laughs> did you think about teaching there? And he said, no. I said, oh, because the newspaper press about the student. He said, no, because I watched your school board meeting. And I said, ooh, OK. And he said, specifically the member who said she didn't have to teach her child about race. That's a red flag to me and any other teacher who's going to think about teaching in your district. Having teachers of diversity is one of the best methods for maintaining discipline and creating a safety and inclusion for other communities. How about we focus a little bit more on things like that and a little bit less about badge access, pulling books off the shelf, bathrooms, and whatever else it is that we have coming. Thank you. Zoe Jones. Good evening. My name is Zoe Jones. I am a junior at Susquehanna High School. I would like to share my thoughts about the school board directors having full access to entering our schools unannounced. My experience in Southern York County District Schools has not been pleasant. As you all know, I have experienced harassment and discriminatory incidents while at school. The interruptions and incidents during school has been overwhelming and sometimes causes me anxiety throughout the school day. I feel allowing the board members to come into our school unannounced is unnecessary and will be another interruption. Even though I have a small group of friends, overall, I feel like I am in survivor mode and not welcome by many in my school. Many times during certain discussions and book readings, I feel uncomfortable, especially when I am the only black student in the classroom. I feel this way because I honestly don't feel supported by certain administrators, school counselors, teachers, office staff, and board members. Other students and myself feel as though our voices and feelings don't matter because we express our concerns. However, it seems like decisions have already been made. For once, please listen to the students when you are making decisions and policy changes for our school that will directly impact us. That's all I wrote. But I still have like more like 
to say. Um, I just feel like a lot of like people on the board and people that's in the school say they're going to do certain stuff, say they're going to do this, do that, about the what's going on in the schools that everyone know about. It's not on hush. Everybody knows about what's going on in the schools. I feel like you guys need to actually stand on what you say. If you want to expel kids, suspend kids, then do it because it's impacting black and brown kids that go through these walls that shouldn't have to go through this. Like, it's 2024. It's not back in 1920s. It's really not. So I just feel like if you guys want to make a change, like you guys say, you are, then please do it because it actually really is affecting us. And this is coming from a student, not coming from a teacher or someone in the community. It's coming from someone who actually goes to the school. So I have witnessed it. Thank you. Yeah. Amy Hall. Amy Hall, uh, Shrewsbury Township. <clears throat> National Volunteer Appreciation lies in the month of April. It allows us to recognize the impact of volunteers and their service in time. I am a volunteer and have a passion for recognizing and thank you other volunteers who lend their time, talent, and voice to make a difference in our community. Some of our greatest challenges are right here in front of us, but we can all agree that we are here to make a difference for our kids. I have witnessed volunteers provide unified approach and engage with a wide range of people to make a positive difference in our schools and community. I am currently the yearbook advisor at Shrewsbury Elementary. <clears throat> Shrewsbury is celebrating 25, more than 25 years <laughs> since it opened its doors in 1997. We decided that we were going to create a Rewind Edition yearbook and we looked through the entire first yearbook. The yearbook was created by students, and it includes positive quotes by them. One quote stated by a student, students get by with the help of our volunteers. That is what inspired me to speak this evening and give a public shout out to all of Southern York County School District community volunteers. Our schools and community are blessed with volunteers who make a difference in our students, teachers, staff, and administrators. Some may volunteer in multiple organizations in our school and in our community. Many teachers are volunteers in our community. There are PTOs that include a board of volunteers who also depend on volunteers. There are booster clubs, which is operated by volunteers who also rely on volunteers. Coaches who have coached all through their child's rec league, whatever sport they play, through tribal teams, and some have even volunteered to coach in middle and high school teams. The benefits of volunteer go far beyond the purpose of helping. Research shows that it provides many benefits, and here are some. Making an impact on someone. New and stronger relationships. Social connections, usually with people who interact with and handle challenge, they handle challenges with. Our district values volunteers. Your volunteering and time tells them that you are ambitious, you care about our school district, and are willing to put the work in that brings change. Today I reached out to some teachers um, throughout our district and I asked them, when you think of volunteers at Southern York County School District, what words come to mind? I have to say that they responded very quickly <laughs> Um, more quicker than they ever have to send me pictures for the yearbook. Um, however, I have someone doing that for me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> They've responded with helpful, amazing, wonderful, lifesavers, dedicated, sincere, caring, creative, energetic, positive, responsible, the best. Parent volunteers are amazing, selfless, incredible, friendly, and extremely helpful. Volunteers everywhere, in this room, watching at home, or wherever you are, those words are about you. Accept this appreciation and remember, when you are overwhelmed, exhausted, searching endlessly for new ideas, or you're struggling because you really want to please everyone, but you know you can't. 
volunteering matters. I am suggesting that everyone volunteer, encourage volunteering, appreciate volunteers, and help create a unified, inclusive, and impactful environment for our school district and community. By showing appreciation, we ensure people feel empowered to act on their desire to stand up and say, I can help. If you are looking to find inspiration, build relationships, and give a positive energy to make a change, there is always an opportunity to take action. Um, last meeting, Mary Lee mentioned, if you wanna get into the schools, sign up to volunteer at a table, host a table. Um, Mary Lee, I'm sorry, I meant to email you to tell you that I appreciated that. Um, that is one example um, to get into our schools and the help is definitely needed. Uh, so if anyone ever needs a opportunity to volunteer in our schools, um, there are many people that you can reach out to find different opportunities. There's many ways to volunteer. Thank you. Thank you, volunteers. Thank you, Ms. Hall. Elizabeth Arpin. Elizabeth Arpin, Shrewsbury Township. Matthew 25 says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then will he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Titus 3 says, but avoid stupid controversies, dissensions, and quarrels about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. After a first and second admonition, have nothing more to do with anyone who causes divisions, since you know that such a person is perverted and sinful, being self-condemned. If we are truly all one under God's eye, why are you proposing to hire a law firm with a well-documented history of facilitating discriminatory policies, policies that resulted in substantial lawsuits and deeper division within their community. I just cited two examples of how the Bible highlights the importance of accepting differences and being magnanimous and compassionate towards more minority voices, even going so far as to condemn those who are not. If our school board continues to play divisive games, we will never be able to truly put education first. I implore you to start talking to those within the community, those directly affected by these policies, and actually listen to them. To start seeking solutions that are considered of both sides of any argument, not just your supporters. Nobody, whether gay, straight, trans, Asian, white, black, Latino, Native American, atheist, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, or otherwise, is less deserving than the other. And the Bible, which you claim to know and revere, conveys just that. So will you actually live by those teachings as members of the school board or will you simply pay lip service to God in the community and behave like the hypocrites Jesus so often condemned?
Um, Marianne, what's the last name? Winkleman, is that right? Good evening, thank you. <clears throat> My name is Marianne Winkleman. I live in Shrewsbury Township. I served on this board for eight years back in the early 2000s. I speak from direct experience of sitting in your seat. I've been watching your meetings from home and the agenda item of approving a policy that would permit individual board members to enter our schools without notice or escort is very disturbing to me and I just had to come and speak out. Thank you for allowing me. Here's the uh, PSBA leader bulletin. I'm sure you all have had PSBA training, Pennsylvania School Board Association, your trade association. It's a very interesting edition. This is the winter edition. Start here, basics of board service. There's a very good article in here um, that discusses the role of school board. And let me quote from part of it. To answer the question, what do school boards do? They say, school boards do not run the school district they ensure that the district is run well. The job of the school board is governance. School directors do not have the authority to act individually, and they only have authority as a collective body. They list several categories of what boards do. A few of those include establish board goals that support the work of the administration and staff of the district. Hiring and annually assessing the performance of the superintendent and the assistant superintendent. Adopt district budget that reflects the community's educational values and student needs balanced with the financial ability and of the local taxpayers. Those are all governance items, very clear. A few things the board does not include. They do not evaluate teachers, coaches, or other staff members except the superintendent and assistant superintendent. They do not direct or get involved on how, uh, in how planned instruction is taught. They do not influence the administration's personnel recommendations. They do not conduct investigations, interviews, or question students or staff about any incident or anything that went on in the school. They do not get involved with the student or staff discipline issues except in board settings. They do not allow student, community, or staff concerns to be brought directly to the board rather than through the chain of command with the board as the last step. This seems very appropriate guidance to me and guidance that has been followed by school boards for decades. <laughs> I served decades ago. The board and administration and staff work together, together to ensure the finest education of our students. That's all. You guys are volunteers. Thank you for your volunteer time, well-meaning community members. Where would we be without you? But you're only volunteers. You do not have the training. Our administrators are deeply educated, experienced, and you need to trust them. Be the governor and trust the administration. You have a policy. I took advantage of it when I was on the board. It was great. I simply called over and said, I'd like to come and see the high school. They planned a, 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 um, a schedule for me. I got to see all the excellence. In my case, I wanted to see the excellence, which I knew it was here, but hadn't seen it. So I got to see the science and the, and the language labs and things like that. Very adequate, perfectly suited for what any board director should need to see and do and know. Please, do not approve this policy. It is too heavy handed. It is not required and it's going to cause these people tremendous, tremendous statements from these people. Please listen. Thank you. Bob Betts. Well, good evening, guys. The emotion is high in here tonight, so let's take a moment. I would like logic to prevail tonight over emotion, and I understand emotion is strong. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to start us off with prayer. Uh, Father, I just ask you tonight to be here in this room with us, to put your hand on everyone's heart, 
Father, we know that emotionally we are attached to our children. We love our children. We want the best for them. I pray that you would help us to see that everything we do is with the intention of the best for our children and help guide us in that direction. Father, we are always careful to praise you in everything we do. And we ask all this in your name. Amen. Um, so two items on tonight's agenda. The policy that everybody, uh, there's a lot of contention around with policy, uh, board members visiting the buildings. I don't see what the big deal is. Um, there's, I, assuming that the district is going to follow all the processes it already does for background checks and procedures for any volunteer to enter the building, we've established you guys are all volunteers. Um, my assumption is, is I'm not going to have a board of nine walking into my student's classroom taking up the time and distracting everybody. To my knowledge, almost all, if not all, board members have full-time jobs, probably aren't going to have time to be in the buildings all day. So I understand from the position of being an elected board member who is held responsible every month in this room for actions that are usually beyond your control, uh, it would make sense to me that you should be able to somewhat see what's going on in the buildings. And if you have the idea that you need to be in the building unannounced, that tells me that there's reason for concern. I'm hoping that when the time comes, the board will share that concern with the community if there is such. Um, you know, I remember our old board used to talk about running this district like a business. Uh, so much like a business, surprise inspections would happen all the time. And at the end of a surprise inspection, if you did your job well, the inspection reinforced that. And if you didn't do your job well, the inspection highlighted it. And at that point, you might have to reevaluate some things. So as long as the intent is good, and I believe that it is, I don't have an issue with you guys visiting the buildings. Um, I think maybe it would be best to clarify to everybody who is concerned that you're not going to be uh, locked in a room with their child by themselves. We know that goes against policy, even though that's already happening in the buildings without being monitored. Maybe you guys can assure us that you won't do that. Um, item two real quick, the handbook changes. I would also ask that perhaps you guys would share the information on what's changing in the handbooks prior to it going through. Um, you know, I've been in these board meetings for years fighting for parental rights. Uh, you know, they're, they're all of our children, but the handbook affects us just as much as it affects them. Disciplinary matters affect us. Uh, procedural matters affect us. So it would be nice if you guys would share it with us and allow us the opportunity to give input when it comes down to re, uh, revisiting those policies. Um, and finally, comment is not really based on the independent law firm, but the idea behind what's going around it. Um, I'm wondering why in, in a world and in a district that focuses so heavily on diversity and equity and inclusion, the mere mention of Christianity does not get an equitable piece of respect, nor does it again included in positive conversation. I haven't heard a positive thing said tonight about the Independence Law Group. Now, I don't know a lot about them, but from a quick Google search, I learned a little bit. Uh, so I'll ask, what is Christian nationalism? Because I don't see it listed anywhere on their website, but I've heard it referenced here tonight. Uh, it's a buzzword. It doesn't exist. It's woke ideology. It is an idea that's been put into place to create a scare tactic, to create this idea that Christians inherently are evil and they are trying to force a belief on you. And that is not what it really is. Uh, it doesn't really exist other than the idea of there being a few bad apples that always take things too far. Uh, but it's on the internet, so it's probably true. Um, the proper term that probably should be used uh, would be a Christian pastor, a Christian patriot. Much what I would call myself, a person who loves God the Father first and foremost, alongside with family, and then country second. That would be a very proper term to use. The term nationalist is used to create fear, and it, you can see it working. Um, Isaiah 520 states, what are those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness? Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter? That's what we do when we use the Bible incorrectly. And we try to make things bad that are good and good that are bad. From my quick review online, the Independence Law Center states in their own uh, page that they are a legal firm that is focused on fighting for First Amendment rights. And those rights include not only we, we, we have to end, end religious, but uh, Thank you. You know, all First Amendment rights. All right. Let's see. Um, I think a number of the items addressed in public comment we have agenda items for, so I'll suggest that we defer any conversation on 
those until that time. Um, I do want to make a comment. Um, I want anybody who applauded a larger man belligerently walking toward a smaller woman, because that's what he was doing. His, his walk and his, his positioning, he was facing Vice President Hall. Anyone who is applauding that, I want you to think about where you are right now, what you're doing. That was why I gaveled him. It was completely inappropriate. And I do want you to think about what's, what's, what's driving that. <clears throat> um, does anyone else have any other comments on public comment? No? All right. Moving on to the consent agenda. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. We have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion on the consent agenda? Any nays or abstentions? That motion carries. And with that, we move on to our education committee, Mrs. Henkel. All right. For 8.01 and 8.02, those are both in regard to our handbooks, both in the digital world and then in our um, cement building. Uh, in their districts. I'm going to pass that off to Dr. Ruckert and you can give us an update on those. Thank you, Mrs. Henkel. Uh, in my absence last uh, month when the uh, <clears throat> handbooks were initially presented to the school board, uh, a couple of notes of things I did want to share uh, with the board and the public. Uh, when we do look, when you do see in the executive content the uh, specific changes uh, that were made in the handbook, you will see that they are extensive, but please keep in mind the extensive changes were as a result of the requirement for our school district as well as many school districts to be sure that we're ADA compliant with the American Disabilities Act for individuals that have disabilities. So any of the documents that were in the previous handbooks that would have been charts, tables, PDFs, those do not translate into the uh, when you're looking at ADA compliance, if you're looking at for vision or hearing impair, uh, for, for, for the visual impairment. So the changes that were noted in there specifically reflect those. So any of the changes, which there were a lot, uh, that were tables, discipline being the largest one, uh, that in the previous one were all tables, those had to be converted into bulleted items uh, that could easily be translated if necessary. Uh, so there are changes that have been made. That was the major change when you look at the elementary, middle school, and the secondary. Uh, one note I did want to make uh, regarding something specifically that was changed within the discipline policy and how it looks now as a result of feedback that the board has received regarding Title IX sexual harassment discrimination and harassment uh, in collaboration and please understand when we look at these school handbooks this is months and months of work in working not only with the administration uh, but any other information that we might have come from either Mr. Litz or from PSBA regarding policy changes that have to be incorporated into the student handbook so what was presented last month and is in front of you right now is the work with our administration and teachers that have collaborated on putting this information together, as well as some of our other individuals. Uh, uh, this is uh, Christina Wanowitz, who does a phenomenal job. Our secretaries that are doing a phenomenal job and have done a phenomenal job in creating this very, very lengthy document for each of the three buildings to be compliant, you know, so our school district does not incur any future litigation because we're not in compliance uh, regarding the regulations that we have to have set forth. But the one point that I do want to mark, note, is in the previous handbook for the harassment, hazing, bullying, uh, Title IX sexual harassment, prior that was included in a long list of Class three violations and was grouped together with the consequences that a student could earn 
what we did in collaboration with the administration is that's still under class three violations but that's a standalone uh, so one thing I just want to include is this a violation of harassment hazing bullying including verbal physical racial ethnic intimidation cyberbullying stalking or title nine sexual harassment uh, the recommendation actions for harassment of all those items uh, could be a Saturday school out of school suspension three five ten days depending on the violation and possible expulsion uh, we wanted to make sure that it is clear not only to our students but to our parents and the families that yes this is something that we do take seriously it's based on the comments that our parents have shared but more importantly what our students are experiencing uh, so when you do take a look specifically through there I wanted to note that was an item we wanted to pull out and make as a single item under uh, under the uh, class 3 violations so that it's something that does not get lost within the long length of the uh, the other items uh, there are a list of other handbook changes that uh, were made uh, several of them adding updates to safe to say uh, about warrior expectations within the buildings uh, physical education attire uh, so there were some minor changes that were in there but I did want to note that the majority of the changes that you see of the strike through were as a result of our district getting in compliance uh, for what ADA is requiring uh, as we transition everything over to the new final site website which I believe April 29th will, should be the first day that we could start to transfer all that information over thank you for that clarification and uh, I'm gonna put you on the spot for a super easy question just for transparency purposes uh, to date has any board director made any of the changes currently on that first draft for the student handbooks I did receive re regarding the uh, the handbook I did receive information regarding making some grammatical uh, so mr. Wilson thank you so much for uh, identifying some of those because as uh, you look at a 60 page middle elementary a 75 page uh, middle school and then maybe a hundred page uh, high school there are some things that have uh, some similarities that, that should be in, uh, reflect the same uh, but mr. Wilson was actually to get down even to the point where an equal sign was missing so uh, you really went through it with a fine okay, tooth comb. So. but I think that that's that's the important piece right. uh, that we Not have a lot point. of eyes on it but as we go to our final publication and approval uh, we will make sure that those uh, recommendations or those uh, suggestions are being noted in the final version. Um, Mr. Litz, I have a question for you. I know we haven't put a motion on the table yet. Um, I would like to recommend to table the handbooks. Do I have to go ahead and put the motion on the table and then table it, or can I just table it? Or recommend to the board to table it? If there's no objection to proceeding to the next agenda, I think we're fine. I, for transparency purposes, my recommendation would be that we table, this is an actionable item. I would uh, recommend that we table the handbooks and it's a conversation that I had uh, previously with Dr. Reppert. In light of what this new board has been trying to do for transparency, along with uh, what we have done for the first time ever, making some of our policies when they're in draft form um, available to the general public. Prior boards never made draft policies available. We've done that with, you know, part of the reason why speakers were able to read line by line that policy. That's because, you know, it's, it's public now. We gave that draft policy for their, um, for their viewing. I do think something as important as student handbooks and all the changes should be made public before we take a vote. I mean, we don't, we're not even required in the first reading to read line by line the student handbook. We don't do that. But to have them available, I, it just makes sense to me. And so I would ask that this would be something that would be brought back after a time frame of having it be released to the general public and then take it up for a vote in May. Does that meet everyone's approval? I'm, I'm definitely open to that. I mean, I, I, I was a little bit, I, I've seen it before, but still um, when we discussed the practice of not releasing policies until they were passed, um, 
that didn't make sense to me. And, and so we, we had a conversation and decided, no, we're gonna release those after the first reading. Um, and I think the same, same thing is, makes sense with the handbooks. Um, obviously, we already had the first reading, but we can still, we can still do it now and, um, and make sure it's available to public. Point, he was saying uh, in our previous conversation that the first draft, obviously the board gets that first, you know, but after that, that is the, the appropriate time frame to release it to the public. And so that, that translated properly for me as well. Um, does anybody else have any thoughts on that? I just have a question. Does it impact anything with any of your timing that you need? Yeah, that, that was a question that Jim just had. It, it does not. Okay. Um, you know, I'll, I'll go back. I'll go back two months. You know, we took, you know, we're looking at the comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. You know, we do have deadline, you know, that we need to make sure that we have the ability to make sure that we have the items approved. As Jim said, you know, in the past we did printed calendars, I mean printed uh, handbooks. We don't go that way, but we uh, having them printed for every student because they're online. Uh, but we do have some that we do print. But we also have to get them ready because in putting them on the website, they have to go through translation. Mm. Uh, so that's another piece that uh, individuals are able to view our student handbook in their native language, you know, their, their primary language. So um, it would not, uh, the one in, in speaking with Mrs. Hankel earlier, if we continue with a March having them available, the first read, April available to the public, and then vote on them in May would not put us in any time constraint or any concerns if if that's what the board decides um, is there any concern with we with being able to publish them to the site as drafts currently no. uh, uh, I have to thank my secretary and and all the other secretaries throughout the uh, the district they just did an amazing job of updating the handbooks and doing revisions to them our administrators uh, for the collaboration now that we have it in Google form, in, in Google format, let me put it that way, uh, we're able to go in and make revisions a lot quicker than when it was in Microsoft. Uh, but, but they've done a, a phenomenal job in getting us to where we are now. And then once we are ADA compliant, it should be smoother sailing in the future when it comes to uh, the revisions of handbooks moving okay. forward. Mr. Wilson, to follow up on your question, so we can attach them as public content um, mm. so that they'll be accessible for to this meeting's agenda. Yes. Okay. We can we'll double check, we'll, we'll have somebody go and make sure as public, not administration. Okay, that you can see it, but I'm pretty sure. Okay, we can do that. yeah, because I was like, the next month's agenda is not out yet. Can't touch into that. Yeah, I think okay. we can do it to this month's, but I'll double check that, and if not, we'll just put it on another section on our website. Okay. Okay, and, and when do you think they might be available after this meeting, just so the public knows? Not tonight. Don't, don't kill <laughs> yeah, no. I, think, oh, I was looking at Dr. Rupert. I think we could probably pull it off. No, you, Dr. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we could probably say safely by Monday. By Monday. By Monday. Okay. And, and then um, we can send out a communication if uh, just that it is available. Okay, excellent. With, with a link to where they can find it. Um, just for people who aren't used to looking at the meeting agendas, include a link to the board docs. If I could make one comment, mm -hmm. really a question, Dr. Ripper, before we would move forward. Um, and I, I didn't pose this to you guys in an email question format because I really didn't get the, the answer to you'll understand until today. Um, so I was concerned just a little bit about the um, changes that we made in the safe to say section um, about false reports. Um, so I just reached out to Safe to Say and said, okay, hey, guys, how does this, how does this work on, on their end? Um, and she explained to me, I spoke with one of their managers, and she explained to me that the, um, I don't think that unmasking is quite the, the right term, but the saving of, a, of an IP address <coughs> or, the, or the saving of, a, of a cellular content um, would be, generated by the school having concern that mm -hmm. there may be something nefarious or maybe there's someone is abusing the system or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, and that then they work with 
local authorities, uh, judges, and so forth uh, on their process. My concern in the in the policy was that it's not really clear to a student. I'm, I'm afraid that a student might read it and and think that the possibility of it not being uh, anonymous is might might not exist, even though it's not it's not true. Um, but I, just the way it's written, I felt like there's just the possibility that a student might be fearful of that. So if we could address that just slightly so that a student would have a good understanding that, look, if you, if you abuse the system, which none of us want, if you abuse the system, the, the school district's not the, the, the authority that's coming in, to talk to you about that. It's really law enforcement that's coming to talk to you about that. Just so that a student, one, has a proper proper fear and understanding that abusing the system is not going to be tolerated. Mm -hmm. And two, that they have a proper understanding that if they're not abusing the system, but maybe putting something out there they feel um, would be really difficult for them, that they wouldn't have any fear associated with using the law. Do if that makes sense. Do you have recommended language, or do you, are you just um, stating I, that? I don't. I don't have recommended language other than to to change the language a little bit so that a student has a clear understanding that they 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 are anonymous, and the only way they won't be anonymous is to uh, state and local authorities. So I mean, I. I we don't want students abusing the system, yeah. and you can mm -hmm. clearly see that the, it would be easy to do. Mm -hmm. um, but then at the same time, we wouldn't want to make them fearful if they're dealing with something that is is difficult for them. We don't have a chilling effect on on report on 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 genuine reports. And this this um. this does not. Everything it said here is true, and mm -hmm. it does not. Um, it doesn't say that they're going to have a chilling effect, but it also doesn't say that well, right. this no, but, is still an anonymous if, Yeah, if students are not confident that it's anonymous, and you said it's, it's anonymous basically unless police and judges get involved, basically, is, is, what, is what you according just said, to right? To um, according to Safe to Say. And if, if they know that, then that's, they're going to feel better that their anonymity is going to be preserved, I think. If they know but it, it's going to have, I think it's a double, it's a double edge and both edges are good. It's going to let them know their anonymity is going to be preserved because there are police officers and judges standing for that an, an, an anonymity, but also on the other side, if they're abusing it, that's who's coming after them. <laughs> and then Mr. Hall, I appreciate your feedback. Uh, that item information that is in green, I pulled up the middle school uh, handbook. That specifically came from the representatives from Safe to Say. Mm -hmm. Uh, as well as the Attorney General when we met with them about the concern related to non-credible pranks and deliberate abuse of the system. So, I'm not saying uh, uh, so on your recommendation, what I will do is I will go back to them, share what you just said specifically because where it states anonymous, mm -hmm. but then it also states about that piece. Let me okay. get some additional verbiage from them because we wanted their verbiage specific when it came to that. So let me work on that within the next, you know, within the next few days, sure. and I'll reach out to you just to see if it coincides with, you know, what you th what you're specifically thinking there. Yeah, I just only thing I'm trying to do is is um, think about it from you know. Uh, a 13 year old reading it and not not necessarily having a clear understanding of what it's saying to them. Mm. I agree. Thank you. Does anybody else have any other ideas or things right now? I mean, we have a month now, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and everyone's fine with tabling it? But I think we have to. Do we, we have to do you like, yeah. yeah. Motion to table? Does that also apply to the 802? One and eight two, yes. Yeah. yeah, so why don't you make a motion to table both? Okay. I would I move to motion to table both eight point zero one and eight point zero two. May I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Any nays or abstentions? That motion carries. Eight point zero three, the additional field trip that has been added to our schedule. Dr. Ruppert, can you explain that one? Absolutely. I had a opportunity to share about our awesome EMT program. Uh, during my educational update, this additional field trip to the school board 
Uh, what this includes is our students taking the assessment. Uh, Harrisburg Area Community College was scheduled to come to Southern York County School District to administer the assessment. Unfortunately, our students need to go to HAC in order to do that. So the field trip approval or the addition of the field trip is to approve that our students have the ability to go there. And we will keep this on for future uh, field trip approvals just in case we run into a situation where they may come here or we may have to go there. So we don't have to do a additional approval throughout the school year. Thank you for that clarification. I move to approve the additional field trip to Harrisburg Area Community College for Susquehannock High School EMT class for testing purposes for the 2023-2024 school year. May I have a second, please? Second. Do we have any discussion items anybody has with this one? Any nays or abstentions? That motion carries. 8.04, approved graduation date for the class of 2024. Um, this is a, an information item only. See below, it is May 23rd, 2024. I know somebody's very excited about that. <laughs> we're right there with you. <laughs> we're, we're an excited family too. Um, we have 8.05, the Keystone exams testing schedule, spring 2024, also again informational. It's there for you to look at. 8.06, the speakers approved through the vetting process. Dr. Reppert, would you like to explain that one? Thank you, Mrs. Hankel. Uh, we do have uh, four speakers uh, that we're looking to have scheduled be uh, between tomorrow and the end of the school year, but more, it may more so going into next week through the end of the school year. Uh, and I know Carolyn said 42 days earlier. So uh, we have a career day for the fifth and sixth graders at Shrewsbury. Uh, Amy Warwick uh, does have a, uh, a book that she had published for the little uh, little patients. Uh, that would be for Southern Elementary. Uh, Southern Elementary School uh, with Johnson Taylor, Katie Eisenach, Eric and Eisenach um, to do a presentation on the Trail of Tears. And then uh, Jeanette Orlando from Columbia Gas conduct the Energy Safe Kids presentation. Uh, I do know in speaking with uh, Mrs. Hankel, uh, these are uh, presentations that uh, we're looking to, you know, move forward with. Uh, we are considering uh, getting more information regarding uh, at least one, if not two, of these uh, speakers here. Just to have some additional information. Uh, the one thing that uh, to the school board that uh, Mrs. Hankel and I will do between now and you know, sometime early summer, we're going to take a look from her perspective, my perspective, being in here, the current vetting of speakers uh, policy is at 109.1, uh, and really take a look at if there's anything we want to revise or modify, because we created this policy last year, and we want to make sure that it clearly coincides with you know where we're going moving forward. I move to... Um Sorry, I move to. Um... It's actually just an information item. It is so. it? Yep. Yeah. Oh, actually. Oh my goodness. Yeah, okay, that's so much easier than I thought it was. All right. Well, there you have it. Um, did we change that, or was that always information? It, if I recall, it's it's action when we're when there's a cost associated. Okay. Otherwise, right. it's yeah. Right. Well, then the only thing that I would add to that is. Currently, it says speakers approved through, and it, it, it's tentative approval. And so right. that's the only thing I would change with that. They're missing paperwork right now, and so we're just waiting for more paperwork. But yeah, that's the only thing that I would change. But I guess we don't because it's informational. So. And Ms. Sankle, if I can just jump in. From March until the April board meeting, it's like a week less. <laughs> don't forget we had Easter in there. Um, so our coordination was really cut back by two weeks. Uh, so we want to make sure that you know we have uh, all the current information that's required to approve that vetting. So that's where Ms. Nankel is recommending uh, tentatively. And once that is completed, uh, then the schools will have the ability to then schedule the speakers. So you're saying it's Sue's fault for wanting to have the tax bills out on time? <laughs> <laughs> no, it would be the... Uh, the assistant superintendent who's in charge of the calendar committee who created this one a few years back. All right.
Brady. Oui. That takes us to <laughs> 8.07, Stage 1 Curriculum Maps as District-Wide Master Maps. That is an action item. Dr. Reppert, could you explain that one for us? Yes, I will do my best Dr. Hughes right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do have several maps to uh, be approved. And as I was uh, viewing last uh, board meeting from my home, uh, I did hear, you know, Mr. Wilson did ask if we can kind of walk through and kind of give like an overview so you can kind of see what is included within the maps. Uh, so what I chose to do is selected components of one of the physical education and one of the science maps just to kind of walk you through what not only you will see as a board but the community to see uh, what will be available on the, uh, on the district website. Uh, so this one is a, uh, a lesson dealing with uh, locomotor and non-locomotor movements. Um, all of our maps are set up the same in the format. Uh, all of them have a unit focus, uh, looking at the learning goals. And the, the specific thing you want to take a look at under the learning goals, your, our standards, our Pennsylvania State standards, those are specific to different content. So the one that's specifically up here is identify and engage in moderate to rigorous physical activities uh, to contribute to physical fitness and health, which is something I have to do more of. So uh, that is something that you will see in all the maps that there's a specific standard that is related to it. And then as you look to the right where it looks at the long-term transfer goal, that is what the student's gonna do, what they're gonna demonstrate, what they're gonna identify um, related to, you know, safe and physical, social behaviors at home and in school, patterns uh, for fit, healthy, and optimal. Uh, okay, that's another one I have to work on. Um, I'm just gonna move on to science now. <laughs> um, so Kat, if you can scroll down, if you look at the meanings, then uh, another specific component is the understandings. What do we specifically want the students to understand? What type of inferences they need to make based on the information that they receive? And then there's the essential question. You know, the essential question is what do we want our students to learn? And we start with that question at the beginning. What do we want them to learn? And then we plan our lesson. Uh, we call it back mapping. We plan our lesson to get to that question. And then the uh, next slide down there, Kat, thank you. Uh, when you're looking at the acquisition of skills, so you know you have your knowledge of what you know, but then the skills of what you're doing. So there's some things there, you know, pumping your arms, high knees, yeah, good luck with that, Len. Um, and then if you look at the skills, you have like running, skipping, galloping, you know, just some uh, specific, yeah, galloping. Uh, just some specific skills that students would learn in order to master that specific component related to loca, uh, locomotive and non-locomotive uh, skills and movement. So I just wanted to kind of share that specific one. You'll see the same kind of format as you go through the remainder of grade four, five, and six for the physical education. And then we'll take a jump over to science really the same format but uh, one thing I want to point out under standards there's a steel standards there and Dr. Hughes uh, really sh you know she spoke to that at our community leaders dinner you know we're looking at the science technology and engineering environmental literacy and sustainability standards so these are the real specific areas that we want our students to walk away from understanding what are their requirements of understanding that content based on these new standards uh, for science. Uh, I won't walk through the science, but I do, if you do take a look at what CAD has up there, it's still the same format, but now it's directly related to science, and in this case, uh, the content focus is light and matter. A quick question. Um, if you scroll back up to the top, at the, the very top here it says, the weeks, that is intended to um, indicate the amount of time they're going to be spending on this component? Yes, that is the general amount of time, you know, span, because when you, when you map out for a year, you're looking at 33 weeks. Uh, sometimes you might get 34, but usually 33 weeks. So when 
we take a look at what are the standards we need to cover throughout the year, then identify the standards, how they're going to be broken down throughout the year, and then develop the skills and the activities. When I look specifically at the, you, know, you look at phys ed or even with uh, the light and matter, about how long they estimate it would take to come. You might be able to finish it sooner. You might be able to go a little longer. It just depends on, you know, the, uh, the ability of the students, the interest of the students, but also maybe the prior knowledge they have coming in. Okay. Good point, John. Great. Thank you. All righty. I move to approve the following stage one curriculum maps as district-wide master maps. One, physical education, health, grades four through six. Two, science, grade six. Three, science, grade seven. And four, science, grade eight. May I have a second, please? Second. Uh, do we have any comments or questions from anyone? Dr. Reppert will answer them. I will not. <laughs> All right, any nays or abstentions? All right, that motion carries. That takes us to 8.08, .08, novel adoption. I had two weeks fewer to read this one, but I was able to do it and read it cover to cover. And I will tell our students in grade eight who are going to read this next year, stick with it. The ending is so very worth it. And so uh, would you like to add anything to this, Dr. Ruppert, or? Absolutely not. I do not want to give away the ending. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All righty. So I move to approve the following novel adoption, The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. Viking Books for Young Readers, copyright 2006, and this is appropriate for grade eight. Um, may I have a second? Second. Does anyone have any discussion items? Um, I was reliably informed that we're, we're banning books, but you keep bringing more books <laughs> just, in. Just this one. We are not banning books. <laughs> no, this was a wonderful book, and I must say, for my comments, it was so refreshing to see, I won't give the ending away, so refreshing to see an author be able to uh, create a climate and a culture. It's, it's, it's a gritty gangster book without having inappropriate language, without, I mean, I'm, I don't know what the rating on this would be, but I would say like a PG-13, something like that. To, to have a huge dialogue where you're trying to show that these are rough and tumble people, and it's you know the east side and the west side, and they're trying to reconcile their differences. They don't really ever, but you know, and and giving away too much. Yeah, the conversations <laughs> yeah. with that, but um, you know, to, to have a soliloquy of rough speak, where the narrator will just say, and he cussed up a storm, without ever using a single curse word. <laughs> it's just, it was such a treat to read that the author was just such a gifted and talented writer to be able to do that and just the emotion. And it's a roller coaster. I loved this book. So um, that was mine. Any nays or abstentions? That motion carries. That brings me to 8.09, other items of business. I do have one. I had already spoken with Dr. Ruppert about this. For transparency, I would like to say that I, and I wouldn't even ask for the next agenda, just sometime in the future, maybe some of you could help craft my words for me, but I would like to do kind of an overview with Dr. Reppert of the vetting process. There were things, we, we don't want to have our current vetting process be something that gets in the way of gifted and talented speakers. I don't want it to just be this unnecessary red tape, but then we also, so I don't want a hindrance on that side, but then I also don't want it to just be a series of forms that sign, dot your, t, dot your I's, cross your T's, and done, and have not, not have it be a real vetting process. And so we're having future conversations about that. I don't know, I mean, there's the normal adoption policy, Ms. Sue, that is well, for policies. I, I'm okay with it following a normal, I, I just don't. I mean, we can, we can move policies through at any, at any time. Okay. So I think if, if I mean, if we want to go through the normal process, but the, <laughs> if you're wanting this to, to have effect for next year, uh, we probably need to move it through sooner because ha more than uh, most of next year is transpired before we actually adopt policies. So if there's a policy, if you want to change the policy, you may need to do it out of cycle, um, or 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 you can work out a, a practice in the meantime. I mean, we we had we we had the temporary measures of, of retaining the videos before we ever passed a policy on it. So there are options. Okay. All right. Well. 
I was going to say the next actual policy cycle is August, September, October. Oh, okay. Well, that, so, okay, so we can, if uh, you get wanted to here. do it before, you could, or that is the actual. Okay, next that's not too far off anyway. All right, good All right. to know. Thank you. So that's Mrs. Angle, and I know we, we spoke earlier for the board. A lot of the speakers that will come back in August, September, October mm -hmm. were speakers that we have already previously about approved. Okay. Uh, you know, there are some isolated ones that come in just based on, you know, maybe high interest or something coming up. Uh, but the ones that we that would come back to the board in the early fall will be ones that have already uh, been utilized. But I do think that us taking a look at it and coming back to the board will give maybe further clarification uh, regarding the policy. That concludes my education report. Back to you, Mr. President. All right, moving on to uh, item nine, finance and budget. Uh, Mr. Treasurer. Okay, thank you. Uh, nine point zero one Treasurer's report that is attached there. Um, we our concentration account started the month with eighteen million nine hundred one thousand three hundred and four dollars and eighteen cents, and ended the month at thirteen million one hundred forty one thousand five hundred forty five dollars and fifty nine cents. Okay, investments we started the month at thirty million one hundred thirty one thousand four hundred ninety three dollars and twenty seven cents, and ended the month with a balance in our investments of thirty million two hundred forty five thousand eleven dollars and twenty five cents. And thank you to Sue and Trevor for getting all the treasurer stuff done. I know it was, you know, early and you didn't have anything else to do like a budget this month. But thank you for that. Um, 9.02, review, review of bills for payment. They are attached there. I'd like to make a motion to approve the bills for payment as presented. Do I have a second? Second. Any conversation? Any nays or abstentions? Motion passes. 9.03, exonerations and refunds. There are none. Skip over that. 9.04, the tax collection, collection report for March. Um, that is attached here for your perusal. 9.05, the budget status report is of March. Um, both the cafeteria fund and the general fund reports are attached there for your perusal. 9.06, budget transfers. Um, these are, there is an attachment here, executive content. Um, Sue, is there anything we need to say about these? any questions or if you'd like me to go over them no I don't think there's any questions just okay okay so I'd like to make a motion to approve the budget transfers second All right uh, any conversation any nays or abstentions okay motion passes 9.0 9.07 the cafeteria report from March that is attached for your they're combined for pleasure. May's meeting. <laughs> sorry? It says they're combined for May's meeting. We'll get yes. March and April. Oh, yeah, sorry. None. Sorry, I was flipping pages. All right, 9.08, um, early payment of debt service and use of funds. Um, this is something that came out of our conversation during our last meeting. Budget uh, related to some of the budget. Um, what we can do with some of the surplus. Sue, do you want to take over? Yeah, so um, just very briefly, um, based upon our conversation at the finance and budget meeting, just want to take the opportunity to follow up on some questions that we had there um, concerning our debt and, and possible um, repayment of debt um, using, using surplus or early financing. So on the screen, um, Kat has put up um, our, our bond issues. Um, and where we are. So coupon rates are basically the rates that um, the bonds uh, are, are being paid out at um, each time they mature um, and each year. Um, yield is what we actually paid. So we, we've done very well, um, as I said at that meeting. Um, with bonds, are a little different than like uh, your mortgage. Your mortgage, you can pay at any time. Um, bonds have call dates. Um, so our, our next call date would be September 1st, 24. Um, you can call about 30 day, or 90 days ahead of, of that. 
Um, so working with our financial advisors, um, we always look at, at call dates. Um, that would be a good opportunity if we wanted to use additional cash. Um, the market is not ripe for it now. Um, it's not a good, like if we're not, it's not conducive, but um, a slight change. Um, so if the Federal Reserve um, would lower interest rates by 25 basis points or 50 basis points, we would probably be um, in an area where we could do a refunding. Um, and if we wanted to use additional cash for prepayment, we could do that. Um, at this point, they're recommending that um, we continue to take a look at those capital projects because I know we're, we're putting that feasibility study out there, see what those needs are, um, and then move forward. So um, we're in constant contact with them. Um, we'll continue to talk to them about um, any refunding opportunities. But we'll probably have one in the next year because we have that um, call date. So any questions on that? Also, the um, latest inflation print is that no, nobody's thinking the Federal Reserve is going to cut even as early as they were thinking. Right. So, yep, um, they've been holding steady. Yeah, and the, these yields are very low, so it's it's. I, you, I really can't see paying any of these. I mean, some of them we can't pay now anyway because they have call dates in 2030. But um, we can make more money by having the money invested right now than we're paying. So it's just. To me, I don't, I don't see any sense in paying them off with current, the current rate environment. Right. The only thing we may want to consider, and, and not necessarily paying them off early, but um, so our yields are extremely low, but our coupon rate, so, which is what we're actually paying now um, for that 2019 issue is about 4%. So if we can borrow less than that, they're thinking if, if things lower just a little bit in the market, um, we may ha have an opportunity. Usually what we do is we look at a 2% return as long as we can lower and get a savings of 2%, then we would recommend moving forward. So I'll keep you posted. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. 9.09, .09, resolution authorizing the 2024-2025 proposed final general fund budget. Um, we did get the presentation earlier from Sue on this. So I'm going to start off by saying make, I'm going to make a motion to approve resolution authorizing the 2024-2025 proposed final general fund fund budget PD 2028 totaling $66,428,134 and direct the administration to advertise as required by law. Second. Second. Any conversation? Any questions? I'll just reiterate, reiterate one more time, this is a proposed budget. This is when it's going public, so uh, if, the, if, if anyone has any comments on it, um, you, have a, you have about a month to get them in, and, and we can adjust the budget in May if necessary. But uh, this, is, this is kind of, kind of like what we're, we're doing with policies with the first reading. We're making it public right now, uh, but we can still, we can still make modifications if, if needed. And I don't think we're going to aim to make any changes during the May meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Okay. Highly recommending right. we not do that. <laughs> any other questions? Um, any nays or abstentions? Hearing none. Motion passes. Okay. 9.10. Food service management company contract. Uh, big thank you to everybody who worked on this, Sue, Trevor, Bill, Jeremy. Um, I'm going to make a motion to approve awarding the food service management company contract to Compass Group USA, Inc., by and through its Chartwells division for the year July 1st, 2024 to June 30th, 2025, as required by the Pennsylvania Department of Education. This is the first year of a potential five years. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Obviously, this is a change from Whitson's to Chartwell's. Um, any questions? Any discussion on this? I'd like to just ask uh, the committee members what they're experiencing. What, what can the students look forward to in the next year? Um, Food. It was, it was great. Uh, it really was great working with uh, Susan and Trevor. Their uh, experience was invaluable in the whole process. Um, 
it was also great to have agreement between the four of us, you know, in, in our evaluation process, um, separate from one another, and then to come together and all, all be on the same page. Uh, that was great. Um, we visited um, other schools so, and went and, you know, kind of saw it live. And uh, they, they were, um, they were an impressive company, and um, they really put themselves forward, uh, really wanting to, to couple with us and uh, do an excellent job for us. So um, I know that transition is difficult, but I hope it is as, as smooth as possible for for the employees, um, and that you know, we can slide into this new uh, agreement uh, next year, and it'll be. It'll be great for our, our, our students, and it'll also be great for our staff, uh, that um, they would find uh, Chartwell's a, a good company to work with. So I certainly, uh, I certainly hope so. We did put a lot of, a lot of time and effort into it, and, and, uh, and you guys way, way more so. So really, um, it, it was great to work through the process, and, and hopefully it, its fruits will show. I think uh, I'd like to echo also what Bill said. It was interesting to see um, the other school and what they did. Um, the things that the kids will get to experience is um, an ability to communicate with uh, the new company of what they would like to see in the future. Uh, they have a text line, I think it is, and an ability to just you know share their thoughts and views. Uh, that was pretty cool to hear. And uh, sitting in with the, the new company coming in, their proposal, I was impressed with their chef. He was he brought us little treats and stuff, and uh, the the whole team was very nice to hear their perspective and their ideas, and they they seem excited. So I, I enjoyed hearing that. And I'm, and thanks for mentioning that, Jeremy, because I really hope that that the text line, um, which is not something that they do in the school that we visited. Um, but it is something that they included in with their proposal to us. I, I'm really hopeful that that, as much as uh, I'm not necessarily a fan of as much as our children are on their phones, they are. They are on their phones. So I'm hoping this gives them good opportunity to be able to communicate uh, when things are great, when things are not so great. And uh, it, was, it was refreshing to see that they're really trying to take they had the most aggressive approach in trying to have real-time communication with the students. So I, I really hope that that, you know, Downstown wasn't using it, so we, we didn't really have a good barometer, but I hope that um, it, it really is good for our students. You, you can pass the word along. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to come back. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I'd like to add, um, as we went through the process, so huge thank you to the other committee members, um, Trevor, for doing a lot of the work, um, and then Jeremy and, and Bill for sitting on the committee. Um, as we went through the process, um, Chartwells did have a very tailored to Southern proposal, so it was really trying to make sure that um, they looked at our district and what we needed here. Um, so I think for, for most of us, that was really what, what sold us. Um, but also when we interviewed multiple times, um, we had a very positive experience with that. would like to recognize uh, Megan um, Sosny, I think I'm saying your name right, um, from Chartwells that's here this evening. Just, she just came because it's on the agenda and just to, to um, you know, in case there was any questions or anything that needed to be answered. But uh, I think that's another indication of, of the dedication um, they're going to extend to our district um, and making sure that our needs are met. Because so she, she doesn't live next door, so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so we have a motion, a second. Any other questions, comments on this? Um, any nays or abstentions? There are none. Motion passes. Congratulations to lunch next year. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> moving along, 9.11, student Chromebook bid to Trafera. 
I'd like to make a motion to award the student Chromebook bid to Trofera for the purchase of 600 Chromebooks for the cost at a cost of $195,000 to be paid for using ESSER funding and general fund bound budget as planned. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any questions? No. Nope. Uh, any nays or abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes. <clears throat> 9.12 school picture request for proposal this is another big change i'd like to make a motion to award the school picture request for proposal to the following providers one legacy studios for all services except for sports photography beginning july 1st 2024 for three years with an optional two-year extension and two mike Incroat photography for sports photography beginning July 1st, 2024, for a period of one year with an additional extension of up to five years. Do I have a second? Second. Any questions? Um, anything you'd like to say to this, uh, Mrs. Green? Just that um, with this bid, we um, far exceed our expectations for, for costs. It was much lower than the have very robust competition in this, so it did really help to bid this and to lower the price. That's good. Okay. Any questions? No? Um, okay, we have a motion second. Uh, any nays or abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes. <clears throat> Nine point thirteen purchase letter of intent for cloud storage. I'd like to make a motion to approve a purchase letter of intent for a cloud storage solution at a price of eight thousand dollars per year, which will be purchased through the Chester County Intermediate Unit and will be part of a three year contract. Do I have a second? Second. second. Any questions, comments? Um, any nays or abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes. 9.14, consent, consent agreement to participate in the state and local cybersecurity grant program, a long acronym. All right. <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion to approve a consent agreement to participate in the state and local cybersecurity grant program and utilize several cybersecurity solutions and products free of cost to the district through November 30th, 2027. May I have a second? Second. Any questions, comments? I'd just like to, if I may, uh, thank Mr. Hunt for his work in, in working through this and um, determining that these were good solutions for our district um, since it is free of charge. Mm -hmm. So it's just, a, just another added piece to be able to get this with grant funding. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, any nays or abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes. 9.15, transfer from debt service to the general fund. <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion to approve transferring $6,281,000 from our, the debt service fund to the general fund to be assigned fund balance for use in future capital projects as discussed at the March Finance and Budget meeting. May I have a second? Second. second. Okay. Any questions, comments? Anything we want to say to this? Sue? Is there I, anything we want I to say to this? I don't have any unless okay. there's any questions. I mean, we did cover it the, at the Finance and Budget meeting in March, so. Any questions? No? Okay, any nays or abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes. 9.16, Independence Law Center for Legal Counsel. I'd like to make a motion to approve and to retain the Independence Law Center for Legal Counsel. Do I have a second? Second. Now I assume we're gonna have some conversation. Um, I would just mention that um, we, uh, we did meet with uh, Jeff, uh, our solicitor, um, that, uh, earlier this month, um, 
the recommendation was if we're going to hear from them, it would make sense to retain them. Um, uh, also, I've asked if he can be present for any of those meetings. Um, I think we have to work out schedules, but I would like for uh, Mr. Litz to be present for any meetings that we do have with them. Um, but I do want to hear from I want to hear from them what their perspective is on a on a few different issues. So. And I have a question. Do we have an agreement, a draft agreement? That they've sent one over in the last few days. Um, yeah, it, 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 there wasn't time to put it on the agenda, but we can, we can, we can vote to retain them and then enter into the agreement afterwards. Um, well, suppose we're not satisfied with the agreement. So I've had Jeff look oh. at it and, and he's satisfied, but if you're not satisfied with it, we haven't his, seen it. His, yeah. Yeah. So I, I did make some revisions to the agreement, which they accepted. Let me ask you this. What's it say in the agreement if the work they do causes us to get into a lawsuit, and I assume they're going to defend us, what are we going to pay? I don't. Are we going to pay them? Do we have to pay them? Well, it, it's a hypothetical. It, it would be depending on a lot of things. Uh, if you get sued, what you get sued for, how the who's defending it, your insurance, whether you cooperate with your insurance company, there's a whole parade of issues that you need to consider. The, but the, the general agreement is it would be retaining them for legal matters related to policies at no charge. You have the ability to communicate, you know, email, stuff like that. If there were in incidental costs that the district occurred, you know, beyond just ordinary stuff, you, you would have to pay for that. You can uh, end the relationship at any time. Um, there was some language about um, uh, communicating with them, um, and which is what I revised to ensure that individual employees and board members, you know, would have the right to speak on matters of public concern as they see fit. Um, but it's a relatively short agreement. Uh, that's what I remember off the top of my head. <coughs> well, what I'm more concerned about is they cost Dover School District a million dollars. Uh, just what I could say to this is, you know, what I'd say to any school board, uh, lawyers give advice. Uh, boards are free to accept that advice or reject that void advice. Uh, if they're making any advice on course of action, that would have to come before the board, put on the agenda, and discussed and voted on. So uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, any recommendation, whether it be me as solicitor or any special counsel, you know, the, the buck stops with, with you collectively as a board. Um, and I would encourage the board, just as you've dealt with me in the past in some things, to, to ask questions to make sure you fully understand, uh, you know, whatever legal questions you may have or issues or, or, or what recommendations. Uh, are being made so you're, you're fully satisfied so you can cast a vote that you, you can stand by. I got another question. Mm -hmm. Is there a specific policy we're hiring them for or is it for yeah. any policy? Uh, I don't have the agreement in front of me. It, it did not specifically refer to a finite set of policies. Can anybody answer that, why we are hiring them? What policies are you looking for? What What are you looking for? Why do you want them? So we're we're looking for their uh, their policies on a number of a number of issues, uh, and we just actually we want to hear from them, uh, and we can't do that as a board, um, you know, and and we, we we can't do that in an executive session as a board without retaining them first. Right. So, I just want to be transparent with the community that's yeah. questioning it. So I think that we should be able to say why we want them or why we're thinking about them or what our thoughts are for it. So I, I want to hear from them about their, their policy uh, recommendations on a number of on a number of diverse policies. Of which um, ones? I want to hear from them about um, I just want to be uh, open with athletics the is, is one in, is one in particular that we discussed with Jeff that, that that's probably the first one that I want to hear from them about is athletics. Um, there, there are probably others, and they'll 
they'll come to us and make make presentations and make recommendations. I have a question. Does retaining this law firm necessitate that we have to go forward with any policy they produce? Well, I, as I said earlier, uh, you obtain counsel, answer questions, uh, consider anything, but the board has to put something on the agenda to vote on to approve it, whether it be a, a, a policy or a purchase or uh, th things like that. Um, so, I mean, so it's fair to say that this, us retaining them so that we can discuss policies, you know, policies of interest or matters of interest with them um, does not commit us to running any policy any policy that we would either adopt or revise based on our, you know, Mr. Litz's recommendations would obviously come before this board for first and second reading. Is there, approved. if I may, is there any, because I, I haven't seen the draft letter either. Um, yeah. Is there any possibility of, I mean, are we in a rush for this by any means? Well, we, I'd like to hear from them. Um, Okay. Uh, myself. Um, so I, I think it's retaining them doesn't commit us to anything. Um, is it other is, than being other than it, it enables us to hear from them in, in executive session? Okay. Is there any possibility of pushing this a little bit till we all get to see the draft letter? Is that possible or no? We can. I mean, you, I'm just asking. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd like to get eyes on it too, preferably. Okay. So I'd, I'd propose we table this till we all have a chance to see the agreement, see what it says. The second vote. There's a motion to table. There's a second to table. I'll make a motion. So we have a motion to table. Second. Discussion. I don't. I, I, I understand the the fear of the road that it could go down. I personally don't see a problem with retaining them to find out what they would like to propose and what their policies are. I don't I just don't see a downside to retaining. We can we can always amend the agreement before we actually act on any policy. So all this does at the moment is gives us the ability to hear from them in executive session. Um, how would the other board members this may be a question for you Jeff. How would the other board members be able to have an opportunity to see this agreement before voting for it or against it. Have to get it to them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that would probably be to move this to the next meeting. If that's what you'd like. Is there's, that, there's a motion to table with a second. But I mean, that, we're in conversation now. Yeah, I mean, second if, motion. if um, the idea is we want to get the agreement to everyone, um, and I think that's I think that's appropriate to definitely have everybody. I mean, I know the timing was a little tight. And there's no the agreement is that you already Relative, have that established. It's you should be presenting it. it. It's an agreement they've shared with other districts. Uh, my colleague reviewed it and made suggested changes. Uh, for another school district that was considering it. Uh, that's the version I got. I made suggested changes to that agreement without which you were incorporated. So, uh, and then they accepted your yeah. your changes. Yeah. Okay. So, they, so that 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 agreement's already established. We just need it would just need to be brought forth. Yes. I mean, in that regard, I'm fine tabling this for the month. That's my perspective, anyway. Yeah. So we have a motion and a second to table. Is there any further discussion on the motion to table? Well, the only thing I would like to clarify is, and, and maybe you can do this for me, Jeff, um, or Mr. Litz. No, no. So basically, what what we are going to be hearing from in, in them in executive session would be similar to what we heard from you basically giving you know your legal advice on various lots of issues 
uh, that we talked we talked about. Is that is that correct? Well, I, it, that's what you guys want to do. Uh, I don't want to be presumptuous. Yeah, I, I'm assuming that's what would take place. I assume that, but yeah. I, you know. Well, is it? I, but, I, I would but say you haven't been retained, so right, no, we, right. that hasn't is, been discussed. Yeah. Is a, at a board at this point, is that our intention? Or, I don't have no problem tabling it. Let, let the community see the agreement, that's fine. Oh, I, also would, think I don't know if the community would see I don't it, think we, we would all get to see it. Oh, okay, well, all right, let the rest of the board see the agreement. Uh, you know, have it attached to the, to the next agenda. Um, but I also think it would be helpful to the community that that, is that our intention? To have uh, a session with them for legal advice? And a legal understanding of yeah the, presentation of their understanding issues. of multiple issues yeah yeah just as we have done with Mr. Lentz well just like we do with um, Sweet Stevens Cats and Williams which is our special education yeah. law for right. mm -hmm. correct yeah. which is which is why it's hard to answer like what is it that we want to hear about what well, they haven't presented to us mm -hmm. I don't know yet I can say full disclosure there are policies that they've other, done for other districts that I am not and I repeat not interested in in the slightest but banning not my thing not interested in that and no. uh, Mr. Holly you had mentioned that you know this district supposedly not supposedly in quotation marks but cost over you know money and I do I can hardly hear what you're saying but same could ask me yeah. nicely to speak up and I will um so it's okay. It was a slight, though. Um, but no, I, I, I see your point, but I mean, and, and this is not an unfair question that I'm trying to put you in, Mr. Litz, but, you know, I mean, lawyers cost districts all the time, solicitors cost districts all the time. So to put on this law firm that Dover lost, well, raise your hand if you intend on putting intelligent design in a public school. Anyone? Anyone? Okay, I think we're fine. So it's, it's, it's not, it's disingenuous to say that law firm cost and then attribute malice when, yes, lawyers cost many districts many things. It's, it's, it's a poor argument. I try not to. <laughs> you do sometimes, though, don't you? <laughs> so just for my own clarity, um, we are seeking co-counsel to discuss some advice based on policies that are up and coming regarding athletics yeah and parental rights yeah things that we don't have current policies for okay which there are certain corporations that do just announced this week right um, so that could be helpful mm -hmm. um, and I would say to that policy regarding that for, for my purpose anyone that would want to sit down and give me free legal advice sign me up i'll listen yeah and this is not costing the district any yep. money to retain them no and that's what the agreement says mr Litz, other than you said some yeah ancillary calls yeah, like i say i don't have the short agreements two pages i mean if you guys went off and authorized i'm not saying you would do this you know but if someone says to file a lawsuit, even if I were to write it for free, there's filing fees you have to pay to the court, uh, mm -hmm. those types of things. Sorry. I mean, if, if, for my part, if Mr. Litz is comfortable with that this agreement uh, provides us with the ability to hear counsel from them in executive session, and that that's as far as we're going at the moment, um, then you know we can always amend if there are other parts of the agreement that we're not comfortable with we can always amend the agreement um because it's as you said you can you can you can exit it at any time you i assume you can amend the agreement at any time by exiting it and and re-entering if, if nothing else so i'm 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 comfortable because the, my only intention at the moment is to hear from them so i i don't think i need to see the agreement um more than i have um and i'm comfortable if Jeff says that it allows us to hear from them, um, that's that's enough for me. Mr. Litz, does it um, articulate any other scopes of service other than just um, counsel? Nothing beyond the that. The term legal matter, um, I would, it's purposely flexible, I'll say it that way. Um, like I said, it, it doesn't say a policy on X or Y. Mm -hmm. So. 
I mean, I would say for the purpose of um, navigating very complex legal environment in education, it would be um, to help us fulfill our governance role to be able to at least hear what they have to say. We're not committing to anything beyond that. I think it would be irresponsible for us not to hear that. Um, and it doesn't commit us to anything beyond being able to get that perspective. And I do want to thank Mr. Litz. He did do a wonderful job of uh, helping us navigate some of the, the legal challenges that are prevailing in uh, K through 12 education. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I have a question. Why did, why is this, sorry, why is this the law firm that you guys are choosing to have this conversation with? Like, is it something that you guys approached them? Did they approach us? Like, how did we find ourselves in this situation where we're discussing with this particular law firm? Have we done things with them in the past? <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not aware if we've done anything with them in the past. Um, I'm, I'm aware of them um, and, and some of the work they've done. Um, I think some of it is interesting um, from my understanding of, of the law, and so I just want to, I would like to hear from them um, because I, I think that they bring a, uh, a valuable perspective on, on at least some issues. It, it occurred to me, and I'm sorry, I'm not, not cutting you off, if there's anybody else that would like to respond. It just occurred to me. Um, Mr. Litz, another rumor that we had heard, uh, we're not firing you by retaining this law firm, are we? Or is, am I giving you an advance notice now? <laughs> I, yeah, I guess, uh, you know. I, you know. Sorry. No, no one's told me. Okay. Um. But, but for clarity's sake, it is, it is in, in participation with or supplemental to it's, not firing you. You have the prerogative to hire special counsel in addition to your solicitor. If you want to issue that, per, issue, that's your right. And, and we do, as a, a record in the past, we, we already do have supplemental and special counsel for other things, correct? Yes. Okay, like uh, special education, correct? Yes. Okay, so that's already precedent. We do have supplemental counsel. Yes. There was a time before I was solicitor, I was special counsel for the district. Two hats. <laughs> Any further discussion on the motion to table? I, I think I, I would agree that it would be good to see the, pol the having that policy or the, uh, the agreement in hand before moving ahead with it. I would agree with that. Okay. Well, shall we have a vote? Do we roll call it? Roll call the table. Is that yes. We're saying yes to tabling. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. No. No. Yes. That is tabled. Um, back to you, Treasurer. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, 9.17, other items of business, I have none. Back to you, uh, President Henkel. Uh, on to item 10, uh, personnel and policy, uh, Vice President Hall. Thank you, President Henkel. Um, item 10.01, the job description for speech and language pathologist. Um, it is um, um, for action for us to be able to vote on it. Um, I just wanted to bring out just a couple things in this. It is a pretty standard job description, the way that it's set up, but things I thought would be interesting when I was sitting on the other side to know um, that the terms of the employment, the salary, and the work year is established in conjunction with the Southern New York Education Association bargaining agreement and the Board of Education's policies governing employment of professional employees. Um, this particular position will report into the Director of Special Education and the building principals. And the goal of the speech and language pathology is to diagnose speech and language disorders and provide direct and indirect services to students through assessment, planning, goal development, and the provision of appropriate therapeutic intervention designed to support speech and language development. Um, so I would like to make a motion to approve 
the job description for the speech and language pathologist. Do I have a second? Second. Can I do that right? Any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, any nays or abstentions? All right, hearing none, this motion passes. Okay, moving on to item 10.02, adjudication for student A. Um, the Board of Education to consider approval of adjudication for student A. The board hereby permanently expels the student from the Southern York County School District effective immediately. Provided, however, that the student may apply for readmission to the school district after one calendar year, which is March 20th, 2025, if the student agrees to, complies with, and has met and meets with the following conditions. Number one, while expelled, the student must participate in the Alternative Education for Disruptive Youth program chosen for the student by the school district. While attending this program, the student must maintain regular school attendance and have no disciplinary referrals while enrolled in the program. Item number two, the student may seek an alternative education other than what the school district offers, but it shall be at the parent's expense. Item number three, while enrolled in the alternative education for disruptive youth program, the student must participate in any and all counseling programs requested by the school district and or the ADY program, including, but not limited to, drug and alcohol counseling, student, the student assistant program, and mental health counseling. The student must follow all recommendations as part of that process. Number four, prior to applying for readmission to the school district, the student must successfully complete two random drug tests at the parent guardian expense, which demonstrates the student is not using illegal and or non-prescribed drugs. Drug test dates will be selected by the school district and must be completed within 24 hours of notification. Parents guardians must present results of the drug test to the school district within 48 hours of the initial notification. Item number five, failure of the student to complete a test within 24 hours or if any test result indicating the presence of an illegal and or non-prescribed drug may result in either a delay of readmission eligibility and additional drug tests or denial of reinstatement entirely. Continued infractions will result in additional delays of readmission eligibility. Item number six, while expelled, the student is prohibited from entering upon any school district property and attending any school activities unless authorized by a school administrator. I make a motion to approve adjudication for student A. Do we have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion or questions? Any nays or abstentions? Hearing none, that motion carries. Moving on to item 10.03, policy 012, school director visits to the schools. As per our board policy, uh, 19 policies were approved via a second reading at the last board meeting, and one policy, 012, was introduced for a first reading. Over the past two months, I've shared an overview of the purpose of policies, which is to guide the board, administration, staff, students, parents, and the public, and also um, on the process for policy development. Tonight, I wanted to share an overview on the policy adoption process as we follow policy 1012 through the process. A policy is drafted, usually from PSBA or in consultation with our school solicitor, and then the board conducts a first reading of the draft policy with opportunity for input from stakeholders and public comment. Last month, I presented to the full board a first reading of draft policy 012 which defines and outlines school director visits to schools. The draft policy was not up for a vote because this part of the process is to open it up for stakeholder input. After this meeting today, the draft policy will be posted to board docs to provide time for public review of the specific policy, not just my read of it, and comment. You may email me and or the entire board with any feedback specific to this particular draft. I would also like to add that posting a policy after the first reading is a change to how the previous board adopted a policy where it would be posted for the public after it was approved. 
The only change to the policy um, that will be posted this evening from my last month's reading was based on a request to the solicitor to define non-educational facilities. Mr. Litz added the wording to define non-educational facilities as athletic fields, school grounds, the Fissel School House, um, any mechanical rooms, um, technical or service rooms, or storage rooms, or roof, um, roof access off of the buildings. So with that, for tonight, again, this is for public information only. It will be posted. Um, I did want to open up. There was a fair amount of public comment on it. I wanted to um, just see if there was any discussion that anybody had on anything. I, I did want to kind of start with one. Um, one of the comments made was that we already have a policy in place for this. And I did make this point last time, but it is really important. It bears repeating. Um, public education is the only public service mandated by the Constitution. So it is something that is, you know, my kids are always like, do I have to go to school? Yes, you have to go to school. It's mandated. A school board has the legislate, they are a legislative body of citizens. So we are an agent of the state legislature. We are different than volunteers. We have a different role than what we have. And putting a policy together is a protection for, for our school district. It's a protection for us and it's a protection for any board that comes in after us because what it does is it sets the expectations for what our role is, which is different. We're not volunteers in the school in, in terms of being helpers or doing any of that. We have the ability, the, the responsibility to fulfill a governance role. Um, we have, um, we talked a little bit about PSBA, um, and we really have three functions. One is planning, one is policy making, and the other part of it is evaluating results. And so much of the planning that we do has to do with being able to evaluate those results and being able to um, get into the schools to be able to see, you know, what is going on with the educational programs, um, property conditions, um, you know, building maintenance, all, all of the things, not just being in a classroom. Um, so I did want to stipulate to me in my mind, that's why I think it needs to be a different policy. Um, I know that there's been discussion on the number of times that we're able to be in. I mean, those are all great discussions. And again, I encourage you to read it in its entirety. And if you have specific things to, um, to be able to email me or the board. So that's everything that I had for my comment. Thank you. Anything else? Um, yeah, I would just say I, I'm, I'm very glad that we, we are making this policy uh, available in full. I mean, I think you did a good job summarizing it at the last meeting, but it was necessarily a summary. Uh, policies of, of that sort are generally too long to read in their entirety. Um, and it was a discussion that we had with the administrators um, that the practice of this district has always been to release policies after they've been passed. And I did not see the benefit to that. Um, and so I, I requested that, that, that we begin releasing policies after the first reading. So this is the first policy where that's being done, um, uh, where the policy is being released before it's passed. Um, but that's, that's, I expect that to be the ongoing practice, to release policies. I think we decided about a week after the first reading will be, will be the expectation going forward. Um, and I think that's going to help because I, I did hear a, a fair amount of, of, of I, misunderstandings or misinformation about the policy. Um, which I'm hoping if people sit down and read the policy in full. Now, that said also, um, we only had our first reading last month of this policy. Um, I did not see it myself until about a week before that board meeting. Um, and so I do not think it's reasonable to suggest that this policy in its current form mm -hmm. reflects the view of the board at this time. We're getting input from the public, from stakeholders, um, and so I already have in my mind some things that, uh, based on feedback that I've received, that I think uh, could change about the policy. Um, and so, um, so, so some, of the, some of the outrage, I think, is, is possibly because of a, because, because you're applying to what, to what you've heard about the policy a different way of approaching policies than this board is taking. Can I um, interrupt you for one yeah. quick second? Wasn't it public comment or content? Like everybody could read it, right? Like if they looked at the agenda, no, did you not no, read it. it no, it was not public. So, yeah, comment they could read it. Well, it, it. well, yeah. now it is. Now it is. No, it was. As of so after our meeting on Friday, when you 
when we had our discussion and, and you all agreed that that's what you wanted to do, we did make, we did put it in public. Yeah, content. I thought it was that. So it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't right. last It is part. now Not, because right, of the right, right. But I mean before they talked. Before public comment happened, they this, could read it. That's what. That's yes. what I was asking. No, yes. okay. and I, go back yeah, to what yeah. you're doing. I just was. Yeah. I just wanted. Yes, to make people sure. have had but the opportunity for a few days now to read it in full if they wanted to. Uh, some of the public comments suggested to me that people hadn't. Um, at least some of the com people commenting hadn't read it in full. Um, but I just wanted to point out that we're handling this differently from prior boards. We are making it available to the public. So that we can get meaningful feedback. No, I understand that. Yeah, I just was asking if it was public because it said public on. That's yeah, it is. It is now for this asking. meeting. It wasn't in the. It wasn't in the first. Right. No, yeah. I understand <coughs> that. So just to clarify, in reference to public comment about the survey that we're thinking about doing, because I'm hearing, you know, the many comments about that one sentence that says, a school director is strongly encouraged but not required to coordinate in advance with the school principal before initiating a visit. So that would be the crux of a lot of the issues, you know, just coming in unannounced. Um, of course, there's some concern about, you know, our intentions with students and things like that, which is certainly nothing that is negative. Um, however, how are we doing with the survey that we're intending to do that is third party? So I've, I've uh, had a, a conversation with a, uh, with a uh, third party, uh, a potential third party provider. Um, I'm actually, uh, I've, I've been working on, w w talking with him about, uh, uh, about possibly some additional uh, services that he could provide, but, um, but uh, that's, that's one of them. Um, so I'm not sure how quickly that, that can happen. It's, uh, we actually played phone tag for a couple of weeks before I actually got got, got in touch but um, but uh, so we're potentially looking at the entire summer uh, you know, to work through these things um, and at the same time we're still just in discussion stages we definitely have intentions of reaching out to staff members and not only to discuss this question mm -hmm. but other questions that would naturally come up at the end of the school year you know to see you know how we can yeah. point our goals better towards assisting yeah I'm, I'm, I'm also aware of another survey that was conducted um i i haven't seen it um uh i don't know what what the questions were or what the results were or any of that so um uh, to me i i'd like to understand something about that um and then the third party survey is an idea i i don't know that we're necessarily absolutely 100 percent like I think the board was generally open to the idea. I think the timetable does matter. Um, sure. So I don't think we, we were agreeing if it takes three years uh, that, we'll, that we'll wait for, for a survey. Right. Um, but, um, and, and there's also the possibility of doing uh, an internal survey uh, rather than a third party. Um, so I think those are, those are options we can consider. Um, if there are any that we'd like to pursue uh, other than the third party that I've been pursuing, but I don't know how long that's going to take. Um, now's the time to, I would say now's the time to speak up because we're here, we can talk about it and we can ask the administration to do any things we think are necessary on this front. So when you're saying you don't have the previous surveys to look at, is, is that the Lancaster Lebanon IU 13 survey and the um, we did when we were No, that that because those surveys were more general. I mean specific to this issue. I see. Yeah. Okay. So on the issue of the um, third party survey, um, I would like to say that I'm very much in favor of a third party survey. Mm -hmm. um, I do not want it to just encompass this policy. I, I believe that would be a wasted opportunity. Um, that if we're going to engage with a, a third party to have a, a, a survey of our of our teachers, I, I'd like it to really address the heart of why myself I, I desire to. Um, have a better understanding of our district. And I'd like that, it's been presented as this being a negative to our teachers. And I would like to dispel that. This is not about being 
lording over our teachers. This is about seeing the climate that our school is. We have a, we have juxtaposed views. You know, we, we hear things from the from the community that aren't supported by our data. You mean regarding discipline and support for teachers in, when discipline is it, happening? It isn't discipline, but it's also in other things. It's in climate. It's in it's in culture. Uh, it's in. Um, I, I, I wish I had written down how many times uh, it was said tonight that our, our school is uh, systemically racist. Um, is that an environment that our teachers are working in? Um, data, the data would say no, it's not an environment that our teachers are working in. People standing at the podium making comment would say yes, it is the environment that our teachers are working in. And I think that the survey gives us a unique opportunity to let the teachers talk to us about the environment that they're working in. Let the teachers talk to us about what they need. Do they have everything they need in their classroom? Do they have the materials they need in their classroom? Do, do, are they, are they um, seeing the, the advancement through the curriculum that we want to see? What, what do the teachers see? and just give them the opportunity to speak to us through a third party survey uh, with total amenity, you know, that they can feel free to say um, whatever it is that they desire to say. I, I think having a, a, a section in there for them to have, just write down an open comment is, is a good idea. There, there's lots of ways that that third party survey could um, take shape. Um, I don't want, I'm sorry, I'm not finished. I, I don't want it to, I don't want it, I don't want to delay it because I would really love to see that before the school year's out, you know, to be able to, um, to, to hear from our teachers, you know, and let them, let them speak. Um, I, it was done uh, during the, the superintendent search, there was a survey that was done. Um, not that that would necessarily apply now, mm -hmm. things have changed. But it has been done in the past independently, and I would love to see it done again before our school year is over. However, I don't know that that needs to circumvent or trump the board have a better understanding of the climate in our school. And it, it does move me to have a student stand at, at the podium and say the things that that she she said and I, I want to I want to have a better understanding of that because that's not what is presented is not the environment that we want for our students not, none of us want that environment for our students um, so in my mind the spirit behind this policy is having a better understanding of the climate that our students and our teachers are working in, and a better understanding of the disparagement between the data and, and what we're hearing. And I think through that, we will be able to get to a place where we do understand and have a clear understanding of the climate of our school and how better to be board members to support them, you know, and to give them the tools and the pieces that they need be successful in their job and for our students to then ultimately be, su be successful in our school and then be successful in life. So I, I feel like the spirit behind this has really gotten disfigured. You know, its purpose is not to go into that classroom and be that teacher's oversight. That is our superintendent's job, not our job. My desire is to have a better understanding of the climate of our school and how the climate of our school that you're seeing, feeling, understanding compares with what we're hearing from the podium, what we're hearing, what we're seeing in the data, what we're hearing from our administration, and we can we can come to a educated conclusion with those things. And I think the combination of the two, of having a, an understanding of the climate of our school and a an opportunity to hear from our teachers can only help us as a board to have a better 
to work better to give our students and our teachers what they need. I have a few things to say. Um, sorry. I'm no, no problem. Trying to interrupt you. Um, I think when I, whenever I first heard about this and it was all the board wanted to be able to come in whenever they wanted to come in, it kind of reminded me at my job, I work at a fast food restaurant, to a health inspector coming in unannounced. As like, you can't, like, not to speak ill of the board, but just be kind of, and it's been this way for many, many years, but just kind of like, for students, the view around the board is just kind of like, oh, like we, oh, the board. Like, you get what I'm, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, students see the board as a place of tension, I guess you could say, a place of like where a lot of, there's a lot of, I, I don't know how else to voice it other than tension. Like, the idea of wanting to be able to come into the school unannounced, just for lack of a better term, just gives bad vibes. Which I know it sounds ridiculous, but I don't see why, like, I don't see why coming in with an administrator versus coming in by yourself would make a difference as to what you're observing, like, throughout the school. But to your point, I mean, wouldn't that still be a bad vibe, whether we're announced or unannounced? I mean, to a certain degree, yes, but for the teacher, would a student even know if it was on? Yeah, the student wouldn't know. I mean, I've, I've been in the building, and they, I don't think there was an announcement before, beforehand. I come over for agenda meetings, and I see students in the hall, and, and I, I, haven't, I haven't seen any that seemed particularly um, you know, awestruck or, 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 or afraid or anything, but. But that was before you kind of set this notion that like, we can come in when we want. Like before, it wasn't a big deal because you guys were just showing up for the things you're doing. But now it's kind of setting this notion that we're showing up when we want to because we can. Like even the state legislators, like when they come to visit the schools, like we know ahead of time, like the students know. I remember last year knowing that, I think Kate Punk was coming into our classroom and like, She's kind of in a similar position as you guys are, as you're elected and whatnot, but. Caroline, you're kind of making the point though, like when they have legislators come in, it's because they want to be able to present a certain way, right? I, I understand the point you're making. I think, I think you are having examples that don't make your point. I think really what your point is, is is it really necessary to be unannounced? I really think that that's kind of what you're going for. Not necessarily like when you talk about legislators coming in. I mean, the whole point of why they're invited in is because they are invited in to see a specific set of circumstances, the, the district showing its best self on that day because they're legislators. So, I mean, that's the exact opposite of what we want to do. We don't want anything to be planned for us. We don't want anything to have to be a special production for us. It's just like, what does business look like on any given day? And that, go ahead. No. That and what you Bill said, what Bill said to me is not our job. We hire these two gentlemen to run this operation. So I take it in that the disparagement in the data versus what we're hearing, that doesn't, doesn't matter to you? Could you ever ask them about that? Yes. yes. Do, during, we have. During board meetings. We've talked mm -hmm. about it in and great detail. At these tables, we've talked about it in great detail. And in, and one on one. Um, I mean, I, if you're going to the, the, do the job, so you're delegating. But in delegating, you have to follow up and observe, is, is it working? Is, are, is, is what we've delegated, are they, are they performing on that? How, how are we supposed to evaluate? Um, okay. you know, this is from PSBA, and I'm going to read exactly what it says. It is also helpful to define the boundaries of what school boards should not do. It is not the board's individual or collective role to evaluate teachers, coaches, or other staff members. Nobody's except evaluating. Or the superintendent. Excuse me. Okay. I didn't interrupt you. Hey. So please do not interrupt me. She won't. If I wasn't interrupted, I go, wouldn't be go so ahead. upset. Go ahead, Mr. Allen. Direct 
or get involved in how planned instruction, parentheses, curriculum is taught. Influence the administration's personnel recommendations or engage in nepotism. Conduct investigations, <coughs> interviews, or question students or staff about an incident. That is not our job. I agree. No one here has proposed that. I agree we shouldn't do any yes. of those yeah. things. Yeah, I that's, agree we should stop doing That's what the policy it. says we're not doing. Right, we're not doing we any of those things. We have prohibited that in this policy. General observation. Let me continue. Get involved with student or staff discipline issues, except in board hearings. Allow student, community, or staff concerns to be brought directly to the board rather than through the chain of command with the board as the last step. Agreed. What I'm hearing, and what you want to do, does not comply with. Um, uh, you're hearing so. something different from what we're saying. You're not listening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just don't understand, like, if you don't want to do any of those things, then why do you need to be there unannounced? Right. So I, I would say... Okay, wait. I, I actually have a perfect answer for that. This is an email that was sent to the board, including Mr. Holly, including everyone else at this table, from a parent um, on Tuesday, or actually Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Um, and this is, I'm going to read just a little snippet of this. The Susquehannock High School guidance counselor said it best at Rising Senior Night yesterday. They advised us to visit colleges of interest, not only on scheduled visit open house days, but other random times as well. They indicated that the scheduled visits is their commercial, not the real daily ongoing activities of that campus. The dining hall serves up the best food. Students are encouraged to be on their best behavior, be out and about, and having fun. So that's just, I won't read the whole thing, but that's from, you know, that's the guidance that our high school counselors are giving our seniors. I mean, it's not exactly scheduled visits. It's not in a public school. Uh, some of the colleges are public schools. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but they're colleges. Can, can I say a couple things? First off, Bill, I think some of what you're looking for are data we have available. We do the climate survey on a yearly basis. We're working towards conducting again this spring. We will share with you multiple years of data relative to climate and culture. And in saying that, Will it answer all of your questions related to how students feel about the level of racism or the existence of thereof? I don't know that it's going to answer all those questions for you. Um, there's also a year and a half back a superintendent survey which did a similar um, thing with staff. You'd have to pull the staff part of that and I'm not sure that wasn't privy to me personally, so we'd have to look into whether it's still out there from uh, LIU 13. Uh, I also believe we have data information which is not too old from our own Lincoln Intermediate Unit. And as a result of that, that data, we, Dr. Mullen ran um, small safe groups conducted groups with some of the same individuals that are, have been speaking over the course of the last six months to get input, to get feedback as to what their experiences were and what could be done to improve them. Um, and, and with all that being said, I want to come fall back to, we can compile, compile all that. That being said, to conduct our own survey, which is generated more specifically to certain areas, that's going to take time. Um, so what I would recommend is we follow through with our PDE survey. If there may be add-on questions related to policy 012, you guys got to trust us to put the couple questions <laughs> out there with the PDE survey because you can't mm -hmm. manipulate the PDE mm -hmm. survey. Um, we put it out there. If you agree upon the couple questions or you give me a couple questions, 
we can put out a, a Google survey. I don't think it needs to be a bigger deal. If, if, if Dr. Reppert, myself, um, Mrs. Green can agree upon a couple questions of the staff, we can get it out and get it back. If you go third party, which I don't disagree with, that's how we did some of these previously. Uh, I know uh, Mr. Litz has done some research for us through another district. Um, and if you go to the point of creating your own per se, you're probably looking at the 10,000 range for a simple staff survey for them, for a third party to conduct, analyze data and kick it back to you. Um, so I would just suggest uh, you give us some time and we can show you the data we have to determine whether you need more or different data than, than what's presented in those surveys. I would say, I'm sorry, sorry. And maybe we don't need to prevent, reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we can use some of the framework that is in the PBE um, and still use a third party. I personally feel that the $10,000 is well spent right. to, to... I mirror that too. For our teachers. And but, I mean, the framework, we don't have to build this, this thing from scratch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I would also expect, expect that if we hired a company that, you know, works in, in this field, works in superintendent searches and all of those things, mm -hmm. they probably also have an extensive well of, of surveys mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they've used. And I would definitely say that I, I don't want to slow down the process of this policy. But I also, and I know that there's that tension, right? I also do want to pursue a third party survey, not just, honestly, I don't, I'm not even concerned so much about this policy with it, but just more broadly, I do want to get teacher feedback with numerous, you know, issues, not just this at all. And so I, I really just don't want to be tunnel vision about this policy and have that be what we're, we're trying to glean from them for the survey. I would like it to be more open. And uh, I mean, I would extend to you know, Mr. Holly and Mrs. Dobrin, and it's, it's obvious that we don't see eye to eye on everything. You know, the spirit and the heart of what at least I'm trying to do, you know, when we were elected, part of the process was constantly being asked the question, what are you gonna do for teacher retention? What are you gonna do for teacher retention? I don't really understand why during the election, that was even a question given to candidates that were running for school board. If the, the answer should have always been, I will do nothing, I will just trust the administration. And so I welcome cooperation with the two of you. Whatever you would like to bring to the table to collaborate and to try to solve some of these problems, it's easy to be critical of everything that comes up. And I understand your heart and your spirit and that you're trying to help as well, but introduce a policy maybe come up with something. I, I would love to collaborate with you and to be alongside with you to help solve some of the issues and some of the tensions that we were seeing. I, I would love to hear a policy from you, Mrs. Doberman. I would, I'd be your number one fan and help you with it. And the same thing for you, Mr. Holland, as well. I don't need a policy, though. I don't need to change anything at this point. Ever right. in life? For I don't know about board. ever in life, but as of right now, There's nothing I'm, that needs I'm to okay. change. Okay, nothing needs to change. Thank you. At this point. At this point, I mean, who knows? But I'm not going to just create one because I want to. I don't think you guys, I, I don't think you guys are doing this in bad light. Like I don't disregard the fact that you want to help. I just really think whether you're with an administrator or not, you're going to see the same environment, and that it would ease the minds of the students and the staff to just be able to prepare mentally for the fact that, okay, these big guys are coming in, they're gonna see me, like, like as soon as they see you, no matter what, the same thing's gonna happen, whether you're, like, I do, I do, I do sympathize with that. I do see your point with that. And, and I, do, I do respect that aspect of it. And I don't know that that's gonna be anything that we really can control students aren't going to know when it's announced versus when it's unannounced and just for transparency purposes for the general public i know some people do realize this i'm going to both scare you and ease your conscience all at the same time we're in the school a lot 
a lot. I mean, who among you has been in the school just this week? How many times? And it's going to be next week, too. <laughs> We're in the school a lot. And the difference for student perspective announced and unannounced, you wouldn't know the difference anyway. And are, are we having student reports that, that they're terrified of when the school board comes in now? We're, we're in the school board, we're in the schools all the time. You're not walking around, you're going to a meeting. Walking around from a meeting. But, I, see I mean, like, but you're not like... in terror, not once, guess. never once. But, okay, so my question, I guess, is we're not going in and doing an investigation. No. But no. yet, no. the reason you're going is because there's racism in our school and we're gonna catch it. Like, we're gonna see what the environment is and we're gonna go, oh, I saw race. You know, like, that is kind of like an investigation in your own way, in your own mind. But it's not. If you're going in there for a reason. So you would It's an observation. It's like, there's it's an, you can call it an observation, but it's an investigation. No, an also. investigation is into a specific incident. But it's, but it's in. <laughs> and it even <laughs> says incidents. It even says, do not investigate incidents. It does not say, don't observe okay, the environment. But why are you going in then? To observe the environment. Because there's been complaints. So you're doing an investigation. Honestly, I would want to do it whether there were complaints or not, because I'd rather, I'd rather know if the environment is, is good or bad, or if it's moving in the right direction, moving, So you're doing or it now? Huh? You're doing it now without a policy. I'm not. You're breaking I'm, it. I, I am there for a lot of meetings. And I do pass through the halls in the, on the way to those meetings, and I did have a building tour, but I, I am not, a, I mean, and I'll say, I am okay with the idea of um, notifying the principal beforehand. I mean, I, you know, I know the policy says, you know, that uh, you know, we're encouraged to, but, don't, but needn't, but I, I do see some, some practical reasons why that might need to be the case. And I, I'm okay with that. I think uh, a same-day notification, let, 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 the, let the principal know, hey, I want to come in today. I'd like to just come in and, and, and walk around the halls for, for half an hour, um, you know, and just see, see what it looks like when classes are changing. I, I'd be fine with letting them know that, that, that I plan to come by. Um, what about limiting it instead of two times a week for half a day or like I mean, maybe like and we could discuss that yeah we can discuss yeah, that well, yeah. that's, yeah. I, that's what I'm doing there's yeah. that's what lot, I'm doing right yeah. now there's a lot of things that I think that we can compromise on but I think Mrs. Ms. Sam Samantha Hall I think that what she was saying mm -hmm. bringing back to, to Ms. Caroline that the, the tension is the announced versus the unannounced right and so, Mrs. Starberman, I mean, I commend you, last board meeting, you, you were asking the question, you know, couldn't people with an agenda, there's already a policy, right? There's already a policy there on the is, books that yep. we've never been denied access to the schools when we were asked. That's true. It's the unannounced nature. If I had an agenda that I wanted to go and do, couldn't I already do that under the current policy? Of course I could. So, that doesn't hold muster to the accusation that I have an agenda coming in under this version. Why does unannounced versus announced mean I must have an agenda? I could already do that with the current policy. Because Listen, can I clarify? I meant you should be a company. If you're I, coming sorry, in to that? look at a particular thing or do some observations and you're not coming here for a meeting or going up to a classroom to help give some instruction, uh, I came in the Tuesday and Thursday for one of the classes, but I was a company to and from the classroom. Oh, well, in classrooms, this policy would require us if, if we were going to enter a classroom, because it specifically says, um, pull it up here, um, a school director shall not, shall not interfere with or otherwise disrupt classroom routines, educational programs, or the daily school schedule during a visit. So to me, that says, I can't just walk into a classroom oh, with class yeah. in session. Agreed. And, and I will say that for public comment, and it is a dereliction of our duties to not do this. We did hear it. That is something that we need to make sure is in that policy so people are not scared. We are not talking right. about going in and monitoring teachers in their classrooms while they're terrified about how to perform with this strange person that's in their classroom. Yeah, to that me that's not what yeah, this is. Yeah, so we need to have language that, that more clearly states, because mm -hmm. I, I can see where public commenters are coming from, that it, 
it looks like ill-advised and not recommended, but not a bold, cannot, no, no, no questions asked kind of thing. That needs to be elaborated. It does, in my opinion. The language could be strong. Yep. Yeah, to me the language was clear, but I, if, if we want to further clarify that, mm -hmm. um, I am absolutely open to that. Um, the, you you yeah. said something that I, I agree with, um, but I'd also like to say that in my profession, I am under the USDA, and I have frequent visits to my facility by the USDA. And I find out that the USDA is coming my, to my facility when they knock on my office door. That has happened more times than I could count. Did you However, feel comfortable when that happened? I definitely happened? do not feel comfortable <laughs> when the USDA knocks on my door, but it happens. It, it mm -hmm. happens. However, I would say that I agree with you, Nathan, and I would acquiesce to, the, to notifying uh, the, the, the building principal. Um, I, I think that's fine because I also hear what you're saying, Caroline, and I don't know that that notifying that, that building principal negates um, it doesn't. seeing a, an actual climate. Yeah, I, I don't, it, it, I don't the, think the tension would be how much advance notice. Not enough advance notice that you can prepare something, but enough advance notice for decency, respect, and security. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure as a board we could figure a sweet spot out for that. So then why don't we remove the part that says um, our school director is strongly encouraged but not required to coordinate in advance? I well, we would, we, would have to, we would have to modify that. Yeah, that, that, yeah, we, yeah. We, that, that could happen. Uh, mm -hmm. The board member would have to propose an amendment, and that can happen. And, and, and part, again, I think part of the, the uh, uproar here is because we did a good thing. Because we released this to the public before passing it, which the prior board did not do with policies, you had a chance to look at it. And there's, there's this attitude that, oh, they're going to pass this exact thing. No, the whole point in, in, in releasing it and reading, actually reading the policy in the last meeting, and when we found it, it's not being released, we'll release it to the public. The whole point in doing that was to allow people to sound off on it so that we could take that feedback and incorporate it. And you, I think you've heard, there are a number of issues that were raised. The classrooms, we can clarify the language on, on that. I mean, to me, the policy already did not allow us to enter classrooms during, during class. Um, and, uh, and the policy, you know, but we can clarify, you know, if the board votes, we can clarify that language. Um, the uh, is encouraged to, but, but is not required to give notice. That could change. Uh, all, everything in here is subject to change and can change. And I think many on this board have expressed openness to possibly changing those things. I know personally I responded to five or six people this week alone, people who were not happy with this policy at, at all. And I, I was vulnerable and let them know what my comfort level was with adopting some additional language and seeing their point. I mean, this is a work in progress and it wasn't perfect. I wasn't satisfied with the draft policy. I hope nobody else was. Um, but there, it is room to grow. And I think that collaboration was fantastic. And I mean, I had some back and forth with community members that you know I had never spoken to before and had some really productive conversations that I just, it was, it was an amazing collaboration. I did as well. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> this is just a reading. Yes, this is just a reading. <laughs> Um, so it's for information. Uh, is there any more discussion on anything? Because if there isn't, then I have no other items of business for my report. All right. Uh, on to, well, uh, it is 1044. Does anyone need a, a short recess? Anybody? Before no, let's do that, through. Let's do okay. it. Have a better understanding mm -hmm. um, of that amendment process. Um, if we make an amendment to this policy, we made no motion to. We made no motion to amend. If nor nor could we because it's not an action item. Yeah, we'll do it. If there were a consensus on some comments, I was taking some notes. You guys said, Jeff, 
take a crack at it. I could do a red line and get it to you. I mean, if, if you want, you don't need a motion for that. And then if you don't like it, mm -hmm. just tell me. Because it's a working draft. And so yeah. Just, okay. Yes, that would be, that yeah. would be great, Mr. Okay. Lutz. I would appreciate okay. Thank you so much. Is that yeah, I'm, I'm certainly open to Mr. Litz coming up with a, with a I, number I, of changes. The notification the building principal and not entering classrooms during instruction. That's certainly easier than trying to do it line by line are, in are, a meeting. Are we using this time to talk about the, the adoptions that we want, or is that something we can do later? I mean, I, I, he's taking notes. Do we Would, take advantage yeah, of him taking notes? No, just, I, I mean, I, can I got some notes. Him, I, think. <laughs> I think I got it. Okay. I, think you, and yeah. I can share it's, something. And, Okay. Would there be an option to email you if there's uh, yes. things that... Okay. Yeah, just, that would be okay. fine. Okay. Thank you. I do have one, one, one question um, just about this. And President Hankel, you, you mentioned something that I wrote down. And Mr. Litz, you just mentioned it about not visiting or disrupting the classrooms mm -hmm. during session. Okay. So my, my, I guess the question that's, you know, spinning around in my head, if we're going to be there up to a half day mm -hmm. and not going into classrooms, so then am I to interpret that you'll be milling the hallways, common areas during the day because you wouldn't be going into classroom? I mean, the fact that the policy allows a half day doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to use it. Well, I'm, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> in general sense. Yeah. Because if you're not visiting Jeff. classrooms, then it looks like, from my perspective of what I'm seeing is, you're looking like you're going to be in hallways, the commons, mm -hmm. interacting with students, et cetera, but not going into classrooms. Is that my yeah, opinion? observing maybe a lunch period. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying that. On that. Let's get the rest uh, of the. Uh, yeah. Because it would be yeah, to have very limited interaction with students. We started students. it. Mm -hmm. Not for my purpose at all. Mm -hmm. We don't want to see the interactions of the students mm -hmm. right. with each other, no. the interactions it, of the teachers with the students. The, 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 the climate of, 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 the, of the school, um, to be as much as a fly on the wall as, as possible to be. Uh, I mean, I, I think I had a unique opportunity when we were doing the food service, and yes, we were accompanied by um, some individuals from the district, but I just kind of went around and walked through the cafeteria tables and just the students did not know who I was nor care who I was. Uh, and that, that was perfect because it gave me a, a, a real view of uh, what I was seeing with the kids. To, to uh, this is a little funny and it's anecdotal, but it happened. You know, so they were, they were serving uh, chicken parmesan to the, to the little guys. And uh, the one fella ate all of the top off of the chicken and <laughs> didn't eat the chicken at all which I found humorous, but that's what I'm trying to say, to understand the climate of what's going on and, and to be a fly on the wall as much as possible. I, I do understand that, you know, um, having, you know, walking around with the administrator, I'm suddenly no longer a fly on the wall for sure, mm -hmm. but that I, I, do, I do appreciate what you're saying, Caroline, in that, Students probably aren't going to to care that I'm standing there or, or even know who I am. So you were a hoodie. You wouldn't know if you're standing there. Talking Bill, I hear what you're saying, me. but you were with somebody and you still got to observe, and you had no issues with it. No kids cared. Nothing. Why do you have to go in without someone? Like I'm just asking because you just sat there and said you observed. The kids didn't care. The kids didn't know who you were. You went in with, like, supervision. Like, I don't understand why the policy needs changed if you can you do that. Observing didn't know, correct? And it's just no, a matter no, of time well, and you before weren't with, they know who you right, are. So that, you weren't walking with, with an administrator at all times. People that were no, not I was not with right. notice. In fact, the administrator was, I'll be honest, I'm not, I'm not sure where they were at the time. Right, so that's... I mean, they were there, but I'm not, I'm not sure where they were. I wasn't really paying. Okay, but that's that my that, that's their choice. And that's, I mean, that's their choice. If you want to go in the cafeteria, but you at least went through the proper steps of, hey, I went to this. You know, I told admin that I wanted to go in. They escorted me in. They might have left me in the cafeteria because they trusted me and I had my clearances. 
That's fine. But Mrs. That's Haberman, their call. I, I and a policy think, would formalize that. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Respectfully, I think you're missing the point. The people he was observing were not given advance notice. If he was there to look at, and we are not evaluating, so don't, don't mistake what I'm saying here, but the people that you were looking at, if they were told the that students, you were, you mean, or, no, the or, food no, the services, staff, the staff, if right. they were told that you were they going had, to be there in order to look at what, the, would they have performed differently, do you suppose? What were you there to was, look at, though? Wouldn't that be an investigation? Very quickly. <laughs> I mean, I'm confused, but what were you there to look at? Wouldn't that have been the an environment at that time? Services. The environment. The, the I'm just, I'm, I don't know. That's what I'm asking, because that's like, an, that would be an investigation, right? How the staff interacted right? with the students, how the students I don't know. interacted with the staff, hey, how the hey, students hey. felt about the food, I so don't, on. I don't think she, the, the meeting clarified that he was there in order to evaluate the food services. That's yeah. what he, it wasn't it, to conduct an investigation of the district. He, he was there because he's a part right. of the And he surprised society. them. He, I'm sorry, what's that? He surprised them because he didn't tell them they were, he was coming. Right, right but yeah. that's the point of the unannounced visit. That's, yes, he had the district's cooperation with that, but they didn't have cooperation with it, not the district, but the food service company. Because you get a different feel in an environment when it's announced versus unannounced. I mean, we do all know this. You could disagree. I'm just saying, if you're fine, if you you're going in there, you're different. going for an investigate. Like no. you're going, you're not just going to serve. Oh, if I was I'm going to looking. investigate, I could do that under the current policy, correct? I, you're not supposed to, but yeah, correct. I mean, like if you. So, what does an unannounced visit aid in an investigation? If hypothetically that's what I wanted well, why to do, do you which for record, well, but I do just not. don't understand. Look, I'm so. Confused. Well, in reality, this policy specifically prohibits investigation mm -hmm. it does so currently we don't have any protection for a rogue board member going in to try and conduct their own investigation mm -hmm. do we no. I just want you to listen to the public that came the oh. 12 yeah. out of 16 people that were not in favor only one spoke in favor of it Sure. But 12 out of 16, and you're like, oh, we got to do this. What does we it are, matter? We well, they don't want you talking we're, to their kids. Taking, they don't even want you there with their Mrs. kids. We're taking into account <laughs> the comments they make. Okay, that's but, fine. That's but great. You just said, I think, a key thing. They didn't even want us there with the kids. We're already there with the kids under this first policy. Under the current. So unless you're telling me that it's something personal about me ever being in the building. I have no idea. I don't know why they don't and, think you. And as far as the accusation that we're not listening, I mean, I again, I could show you if you would like. I do respond to emails. There are 14 adoptions that I would like to change in cooperation with what I've heard from public comment and the emails that I've received. I don't know how else to listen. Wait and what? look. I'm going to side shift a little bit, not to take us rogue, because we, we may need to table this one too, I'm just saying. But there's something I think I don't know that others are, I'm picking up on it, I feel like I want to speak to it, that the unannounced versus the announced and mm -hmm. things are different. Yep, they are. And how do the other people react to that? What is their the cafeteria staff at Dallas? We don't know until you have that discussion. We won't know until we have further discussion with this, this the association. But in addition to that, there's and I don't think this is what was meant. But recognize we're not notifying the. Caroline's not going to know when you're coming or not coming. Mm -hmm. That environment you seek to observe, I don't have the ability to change that in a high school of 900. Climate and culture are what they are. So if that's what we're observing, we'll go in tomorrow. We'll go in Monday. We'll go in as often as you want. We'll sit in the commons together and have a coffee, and you can watch and have discussion with the kids. Carol. How often are we over there, like us two? All the time. I mean, a lot of times it's around lunch, but I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go back to that. That's the best thing. time because it's like packed. We get a flavor, you know? Yeah. If I haven't been over there, 
a hundred times this school year in that commons area at some point or another, I haven't been over there once, I haven't personally observed racism, doesn't mean it's not happening. And so that's the other piece that if we're going over there just to see if we, like, just because I don't see it or hear it doesn't mean that story's not true. Mm -hmm. And just because that story's true doesn't mean it, it isn't at a greater level than I know what, what it to be. I know personally that there are racist incidents. What do we do about that? That's what we're worried about. That's what we're concerned about. That's what we're working on. Um, but not one of you has ever called us and said, hey, I want to go in and take a look. And, and we said, oh, yeah, we keep, we're not doing that. Um, and I get it. I don't want to make you feel like I'm babysitting you or something ridiculous like that. No. But there's a lot of things you might see in here that I can bring clarity to. And most of the kids don't look twice at, they do look twice at him um, <laughs> sometimes. They know you from, you know, middle school prints better than me, so. Uh, Carry on. That, but that's how you get to know the climate and the culture and, and that type of thing. And that is what you hire us for, I hope. Once I lose that, I'm not sure there's, this job is worth just meeting after meeting after meeting. You hire me to determine, to measure the climate, a culture, and address it where needed. In my opinion, you need to see more of the data, what it says. Um, and then maybe we'll have some recommendations for improvement based upon the yearly data that we get. But again, I think going back, I, <clears throat> My own personal opinion, you can get what you need from either either policy, and I'm not hung up on the policy one way or the other. It's, it's, it's the board's policy to decide. Um, but that, that, I, I felt like I had to speak on this because at times I felt like, for, even from the one email, Joe, you shared that it was uh, like we set up the, the an event for you guys to come in and see what we want you to see. That's awful. No, no, no. I, no, yeah, no, but that's how I yeah. took it. So. No, but hey, I, I, that's how I took it. It's more that there's a, there's subconscious and uh, there's, there's going, there are going to be changes without any, without even having any planning. Now, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And, and I don't want staff or kids to feel tension based upon whatever it's done. Or not done, and, and that's why the wording is important because I do I do see why there is fear. I mean, some of these lines in the policy, reading into them the way that some of the public commenters did, I think that we kind of need to steel man some of the things to assuage some of the fear. I do. That's that's my personal opinion, and and it it, it, it costs nothing to do that to extend that kind of graciousness mm. and to show good faith that. No, that that's not what we are trying to say. And no, that sort of thing would not be allowed. Additionally, we can always pass a a, a more, uh, you know, what what I'll call a more restrictive version, restrictive on us, um, and revisit it if we're not True. getting what we need. True. Um, but there so. were a lot of reasonable suggestions, both during public comment and the emails. And the emails, yeah. And we are listening. And I, would like to say, I was in the middle school for um, teaching the kids about interviews, um, and I went through an entire pod or portion, I'm not sure how the middle school's broken up. The kids were awesome. They were awesome. They were respectful. Uh, I found it to be a very, very pleasant uh, experience. I, I really, really, truly enjoyed it. I got to be honest. I hope that's what I go in there. Mm -hmm. I, 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 let's not say hope. That's what I expect mm -hmm. to go in and find. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like, as a, as a, uh, a one of nine in the, in this board of oversight, I at least have a responsibility to listen and then gather an understanding, and then you're able to to make better decisions and maybe maybe you're right dr Brayson. maybe there are some 
we come up with some things, that, some tweaks, some mm -hmm. things that, that can help, that can, you know, make things better. And the data um, fills make, in the gaps. Make students who aren't currently feeling comfortable feel comfortable. I mean, frankly, the, the, the grounds uh, visit we did for the baseball fields was a great example of why. Now, again, you know, it, it's, it's the sort of thing where, yes, we could be accompanied, uh, you know, but you know, it was, it, there were some really good ideas that came out of that, that, that created some efficiencies. And so just sometimes, you know, just being able to see, to look around and, and, and see what the environment is, see what's going on, uh, and, and be able to observe that maybe, maybe an improvement here, is, here or there is needed. Um, I, I just think observing the environment is not, is not in any way the same as investigating. Um, it's, it's just observing and understanding how, how, what, with the data we receive, what does that look like in terms of the actual environment? What does that look like in terms of what the lunchroom is like? Because um, we, we, we hear about the disciplinary incidents and it can sound like it's completely chaotic. Um, because <laughs> that's all we hear about. A lot of times it's sad. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't envy you, uh, Dr. Bryson and Dr. Ruppert, when you have to deal with this really difficult disciplinary issues, you know, there, there's a there's a life on the other side, and I know you respect that. And, you know, the adjudication we had to go through today, uh, it, it, it's, to be honest, it's the part that I hate. Mm -hmm. I really do. I hate it because, um, you know, there's a, there's a life on the other side of that. And, and I know you guys respect that. I know you do. And I'm not saying that we don't have to do it. I, I understand that we have to, mm -hmm. but it's it's still the part I like the least. Mm -hmm. So if I could just say one more thing, and Caroline, I know in the interest of time, it is 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Please feel free if you have mm -hmm. to go. <laughs> you don't have to sit. Um, but can we move forward in the interest of time? Yeah. yeah. One last thing. I think if you guys really want to like know like what's going on. I think you guys should volunteer in the classrooms. Like teachers love like when parents like reach out and say like, hey, I do this for my job. I know you teach this subject. I want to come in and help. Like my mom works in geriatric health care, so whenever the EMT class covers like the geriatric unit, she's in there with the kids, like giving them like the real world experience that the textbook doesn't do. So that like I know Mr. Holly goes in and I have friends that are in that class and they love when he comes in. And I think that would be a good way for you guys to like, build a connection and like really see what the kids think and how like they perceive. I like I really I can't stress that enough. Like get in the classroom with the kids and volunteer. Right. Building some grounds. Uh, you didn't want to take a break, or you want to just keep? Do we? I think. Uh, no, let's pause. Desire there. to push let's through. Go. Get home. <laughs> Okay, so we have our water test report uh, this month, and we had to do, the state is requiring some different testing, uh, and Mr. Buffington, if you want to elaborate into that a little bit, just so we have an understanding of the potential that there could be issues in the future, even though we have none currently. Yeah, the uh, monthly test reports uh, shown here for March. Um, there's a new test on there for P the last one, PFOS, and um, that's uh, been required by Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. Um, that's a quarterly test, so this is our first test um, with uh, passing results. Um, but uh, we will be taking additional tests as we move forward. So um, these tests, you know, go in, in various um, intervals, you know, some annual, some quarterly, and some monthly. Uh, so we'll continue to, to update as we go along. Thank you, Mr. Buffington. Moving on to 11.02, we have buildings and grounds report for March. 
So the building and grounds report is for information. I'll point out just a few things there. Uh, you can see the Southern Elementary playground and sunshades uh, have been completed. Um, also would, would note um, Mr. Keeney, Mr. Ehrman, and Mr. Margish, as well as myself, uh, did a um, athletic inspection uh, of all our athletic fields and did the report. You'll notice that um, all fields scored three or above. Um, only one scored to three. Uh, the rest, four and five. Um, the group was satisfied with that, knowing that uh, maintaining athletic fields is an ongoing process. Um, currently, we have one field um, out of service, that's the uh, field three old baseball, as we had discussed in previous meetings. Do we have any questions for with that? Okay, thank you. Um, moving on to 11.03, uh, the high school project progress report financial report and the timeline yeah so with those for for information um, uh, progress report uh, financial report uh, as well as cats cats right with us there um, she has the slide up for the for the financials uh, so let me kind of look at that review that a little bit um, See our original budgets as well as uh, the remaining budget down there um, on the bottom, $840,440, as well as CAT, if you can flip to the second one. Um, here in just a bit, we'll talk about change orders, but you can see on this slide, uh, we began with the beginning of March with a contingency of 383522 after um, the uh, change orders in March um, were at 377,779. Uh, we'll go in a little bit more detail in change orders here in, a, in, a, in a, the next um, area. Uh, just from a scheduling standpoint and progress, we're doing well at the um, high school project. Um, upcoming, actually, we're looking to um, reoccupy the uh, top floor uh, of district administration uh, we're planning on that for next week um, and you know obviously looking looking for the up upcoming work but everything's everything's <coughs> on track as we're moving forward any questions with financials or anything with the progress report all right thank you mr buffington um so we do have uh 11.04 we have uh, some change orders listed there uh and, and mr buffington if you could give us a little bit of background on those for sure. sure let's list it there uh there are five change orders there um totaling you know a little over fifty seven hundred dollars you'll note that uh gc 52 uh is actually a credit uh, worked with the contractors they proposed um, actually eliminating uh, some painting in the lower level of district administration um, we thought it um, contractor proposed and we accepted you know as, as we reviewed it um, the other uh, change orders we had two that um, existing walls that needed some repair um, also uh, there's a electric panel that um, we felt was best to abandon uh, EC 27 and also uh, the last EC 28 is hold opens for the doors so some of our doors uh, particularly in hallways uh, are held open um, most of the time except if there's a um, fire alarm that the magnets on there are allowed to, to release and close um, we needed to change the location of um, some existing uh, hold opens there uh, to allow the doors to swing uh, in the opposite direction. And uh, as we discussed uh, in regards to 
028. Um, you, you could make argument that it was a miss, but the difference is so negligible, uh, it's less than $200, that we just moved forward and, you know, try to have good faith and good relationship, you know, as we continue forward in the project. So I mean, the, the questions were asked, but it was decided to, to forego hundred and eighty dollars uh, so just wanted to let you know that it was it was discussed okay so moving on to 11.05 I would like to make a motion to award the proposal from Neiman refrigeration of York PA and the amount of $7,500 for the new booster heater equipment for the Southern Middle School existing dishwasher to be paid for by the Food Service Fund. Do I have a second? Second. Um, so I would like to say that I, I did a little research into it and it's a, a, an amazing price it really is. Um, uh, as Mr. Buffington said, they're, they're sort of our of a jewel that You'd like to try to keep secret, but uh, <laughs> it's it is uh, that that's a, a very uh, a good price for the district. So, any questions or comments? Any nays or abstentions? Hearing none. Motion passed. Eleven point zero six asbestos abatement at Susquehanna High School. A motion to approve the following for Susquehanna High School project. One, a contract with EHC Associates of Lancaster for asbestos abatement consulting service for phase three, bulk demolition area during, during the demolition. For the fee of $690. And two, to solicit and advertise for asbestos abatement bids for phase three, bulk demolition area during demolition. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, so what, what we're doing here um, is preparing for the possibility of finding asbestos during the demolition. Um, and we are preparing by having um, EHC, and if I misspeak, correct me, EHC Associates prepare us a plan that will go out to bid so that we have those bids in hand and ready in the event we find some types of asbestos uh, with the hopes that this would prevent delays or at least minimize delays uh, as much as possible. Um, there is a possibility that we may um, spend a little bit of money and even if we find nothing uh, we may spend a small amount of money. So you said what, three to five thousand potentially. So they would need bonds. Right. Yeah. As so part of the bidding process. Yeah. So um, it's this is not without some expense, but it is a insurance policy to ensure as we're going through the summer that if we come across more asbestos, we're prepared. Because yeah, certainly delaying delaying that process costs. If we delay the demolition, which ultimately delays the project, there can be significant cost to that. So, right. or superseding, you know, three or five thousand dollars. So this is that. That's what we're voting on here is uh, an insurance policy. I mean, we sure hope that we we find no more asbestos, but it doesn't feel super probable that we're going to find no more asbestos. But well, we'll see. Time will tell. So, any questions, comments? Certainly. <laughs> any nays or abstentions? Hearing none. Motion passes. Okay. Moving on to eleven point zero seven. Motion to approve the change order in the amount of blank dollars. Subject to insurance approval for repair of the auxiliary gymnasium floor of the Susquehanna High School as part of the restoration process. Um, 
so Mr. Buffington, if you could go through the process that caused the damage in the first place. Sure. Um, so back in January, I believe it was, uh, there were some holes placed, there were some holes in the roof uh, caused by uh, contractors. There was a storm, much like uh, we're having right now, um, and some storm water came down through uh, and uh, went on and underneath the auxiliary gym floor. Um, we certainly got a remediation in the company in quickly. Uh, however, water and wood don't do real well together, and there is some cupping there. Um, so that damage needs replaced. Obviously, we had the insurance company in. Uh, to look at that, it was their recommendation that um, the entire floor should be sanded. Um, so before us tonight are some options with the uh, logo uh, that would go on that floor. Um, and you can see the, the cost differences there um, with it. Yes, yeah, so um, as you can see, uh, so the, the floor currently has an S. Uh, in the middle of it um, and to put the warrior head logo which is our really only option as far as logos go uh, with our board policy change uh, the cost to put the warrior head logo in the floor is four thousand seven hundred forty seven dollars and ninety two cents that would not be covered um, by the insurance if if the in, if the insurance approves this in the first place so there's a question as to whether or not the insurance is going to approve it um, basically what we are voting on tonight is whether we are going to put the warrior head logo in the floor or not um, so the auxiliary gym had all of the bleachers removed, um, so it's not going to be used in the future for um, you know, any types of public events, you know, games. I, it, there's no guarantee that that never happens, but there's a very strong likelihood that it will not be used for um, sports, sporting events. Mm -hmm. uh, very unlikely it would be used for um, uh, rallies for the students or you know, all of those things would happen in the main gym uh, and not in the auxiliary gym. Um, you know, there may be times that there's mats on the floor, but that would not be permanent, you know, mats on the floor. Um, but in light of the fact that it's not used for public space, um, it would at least be my recommendation that we don't put anything back in the floor. Um, you know, save the, the $4,800, uh, you know, for, the, for other things to be used in the district um, and let the insurance companies play out how, how this is going to transpire. I would agree with that. Yeah, it's a bigger than $4,800 savings if they don't cover it. Um, because because there are different amounts, the quotes are different amounts, and the, the, the cheapest option is the no logo option, right. which this is just an auxiliary gym. Mm -hmm. Like you said, no rallies, no sporting events. A question for clarification. What, um, what did the, this gym have on the floor prior to the S logo? Do you know the answer to that? My recollection is no logo. No logo. Okay, so they put the S logo on a Yes, back in it's the block S. Yeah. 2018. And we, as a board, would be following current policy if we put the Native American logo on that floor, because the only the only logo that can go there is that one. Correct. The only logo that can be used as per board policy is the Warrior Head logo. That is our our only logo in the school currently. Um, 
I, I acquiesce to that. So, so really, the the S option would would break also forward policy. So the S option is not is, is not possible. So it's nothing or the old. Logo. Correct. It's nothing or, or the, the warrior head logo, right. or the old logo, depending upon how you view it. Um, but I, I mean, with the with the bleachers being removed, um, the the likelihood of it being used for a public event is pretty small. Now, I, I don't want to say that, you know, the students certainly matter. I mean, absolutely the students matter. But, you know, when, when you're having a, a school spirit assembly or, or something like that, you know, that's going to be held in, in the main gym. It's not yep. going to be held in this gym. You know, this gym is going to be used for, um, Phys ed. for gym, gym class, class mm -hmm. for, you know, practice, you know. Uh, yeah. I, I can say that for my part, I don't feel comfortable using taxpayer dollars to put the Warrior Head logo in a place where it hadn't been prior. Mm -hmm. I'm inclined to agree. So what do we need to do for you to have your amount? Do we need to have a motion for it or we just... Well, we're already in a motion, but the amount does not exist right. in that motion. So, so we just give um, them a majority of how we feel about what we want to do, yeah. which is nothing in the floor. So I can, I can re read the motion with the dollar value right. connected to it. There's no, there's no motion. Dollar. No, there's no. Like, I don't know when the war a motion, motion to approve the change a, order yeah. in the amount of like once it's active. sixty thousand yeah, forty-five dollars and eight cents, subject to insurance approval for repair of the auxiliary gymnasium floor of the Susquehanna High School as part of the restoration process. Do I have a second? Second. No, if we need any clarification. So, um, basically, the words subject to insurance approval. Um, so, we have an estimate when they came in to, to check out the um, gym. They did an estimate. This is higher than their estimate. So, we're working with them. Um, but we have a timing issue. Um, if we're gonna, if we get that approval, um, the contractor would like, general contractor would like to do it um, towards the end of April. So we just needed to get this approval. We also needed, if we don't get this approval, we then need to go out for quotes and or bids. Um, and now we know the direction that we want to go is to not put it on, so we're able to work forward from there. So it's kind of multifaceted. Thank you for that. It, so is this, um, this is, the, is this the maximum amount for the option we've chosen? Or? Based upon the the contractor that we currently have right. as long as the insurance company approves that. Okay. Yes. That's contingent on that. Okay. Right. All right. And then just for clarification, it will be up to the insurance company to determine whether or not the contractor's insurance should be paying part or all of this bill. That that will be left up to them. Yes. That will not be for the school to to determine. To determine. All right, so we, we do we have a motion in a second for that? We do. All so right. um, any nays or abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes. 11.08, we have use of facilities, which is there for our information. 11.09, other items of business, which I have one. So um, in response to public comment from our last session uh, with the land that the school owns um, in Shrewsbury Township on the edge of New Freedom Borough, um, Susan and I had a short discussion about it uh, and contextually just to give us some, some facts about the land. Um, what year did we purchase it? Between 2002 and 2004. Okay, so 2000. So, and uh, we currently do not owe anything on the land, correct? Right, that the, the bonds are paid off, the note. Okay. Um, we paid $2 million for the land. Um, it has 99 tillable acres. Um, so, it has 99 usable acres. Uh, not taking into account 
the woods or the swampy area down in the lower side. Or, so the total usable land is uh, 99 acres. And for a, to give you a sense, um, this campus, all three buildings, uh, sits on a total of 99 acres. So it sort of gives you an equivalence. Um, my perspective on, on it is that um, the land development in our district, um, there's, I'm sure will still be some in, in New Freedom Borough. Um, however, the, the large tracts of land that are not developed are in the townships, whether it be Shrewsbury Township or Condoris Township. Um, townships are not, our townships are not as friendly to building. Um, you know, that's their, their perspective and prerogative. Um, and, but in Shrewsbury Township, typically their planning commission, when they do approve uh, land for development, they like it to be in close proximity to current development. Which it would um, be in this case. You know, that, that's, that's uh, typically how the township views those things. Shrewsbury Township views those things. Um, this land is adjacent to uh, Kohler Point, um, which is a, a larger development in New Freedom Borough. That's basically right, right straight across the street from Kohler Point. And then also from some older um, homes and development that happened in New Freedom many, many years ago in, you know, uh, 3rd and 4th Street and Front Street. Um, so I think there's two things to weigh, and, and certainly we could, we could put this on the agenda and really flush it all out. There's two things to weigh. One, um, at the size of the land, um, it would be at least acreage of the land. Um, it would be conducive to basically where we are now, you know, in, in multiplication of, of where we are now. Um, how long it would be till the district required such things, additional high school, additional middle school, additional elementary school, additional fields. I, I, that does not feel like any time in the in the near future. I, I think that's that's one side of the equation. I do think the other side of the equation is that from a community standpoint, this probably is developable land um, that, that the township would allow to be developed. There's no guarantee to that, but it at least adheres to their desire to see development closely adjacent to other development. Um, where we want to go with that as a board, I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to respond to his um, comments, mm -hmm. put a couple of facts together, and, and just present it to the board. It's also worth noting that um, certainly if the land was developed, that would increase the tax base. Um, if, you know, if, if it was developed and people moved in, it would increase the tax sure. base. Um, but development then also creates, well, you would think typically development would, would create, you know, more students, but no, <laughs> you know the whole Not thing always. on Franklin Street just kind of just it surprises me that it did not do that. You know because that is a enormous complex of homes uh, on Franklin Street. I apologize, and I might have missed it when I was in the bathroom. Sorry, but are we paying on this land, or I thought the I thought the farmers were like renting it mm -hmm. and using it. So yep. we're not losing money on it. We're just owning not, the land, correct? We're not losing money. So we're leasing to farmers currently. So, so you you had gone into this a little bit, Susan. Mm -hmm. um, we do have to pay county tax. Is that correct? Yeah. So we, we pay county municipal because we're not using it as a school right now. It's a pretty mm -hmm. low bill. I can find the amount. Um, and then we get about thirty five thousand thirty five thousand dollars a year um, for rental income. So it basically so. pays for itself, and we have no pressing financial needs to sell it. Right. So we're just going to kind of let it go. I would let and it go. I, and I don't, I don't disagree with that statement. I just think that that there's, a, it's a double-edged sword, in that because the township is very um, 
selective about where it allows uh, you know development expansion um, I think this falls inside of of their parameters uh, that doesn't mean that that we have to uh, doesn't mean we have to sell the land it just does mean that um, there's a potential of growth in the community that us holding the land suppresses that's that's what I'm trying to say it's it's also worth noting yes we, we receive a little bit of income from the land I mean that's 35,000 is not a lot um, and real estate as as an investment uh, it's not a great investment if you just buy it and hold it it, it on over the long term it generally appreciates with inflation um, and so the fact that we're earning a small amount of income off of it and then we're getting basically inflation out of it over the long term that's the projection uh, you know that could be going for capital projects that the school actually needs uh, without without increasing taxes so it's and we're also keeping farmers happy <laughs> I mean yeah I take farmland away yeah, just to answer your question. So, a couple things. Um, there is something in the documents that I pulled um, when I knew the gentleman was going to speak that, that I've been speaking with Mr. Lutz about. There is something about building rights on this land that we have to. Um, this is a pretty long right now. So, we've not gotten the answer to that yet, but we do need to look into. Um, this isn't without restriction. So, there is a building right piece on here that we have to find out what that means um, because it might not be able to be sold to be developed, depending on whether we own part of the building right. So we have to look at, at that. Um, the, the other thing as far as what would it cost, I don't have the answer to that. Again. Yeah. So we would want to do appraisals and everything before we would go to sell it, just to make sure that you know, we would be getting a fair price. And there are there are laws and rules on how a school district can sell things, and Jeff's nodding at mm -hmm. yes. Um, so <laughs> yeah, we can't no, no do doubt. what other people do, so we need to follow all those those laws and rules, which I personally have not sold property before, so I would. We've, uh, it's zoned agriculture, it's in an agriculture district. Uh, there's a sale on development rights, and before we turn that into a huge research project, yeah, we wanted to talk. So there's, there's restrictions. It, you, you can't build homes on that thing right now. My suspicion was, and this predates us being solicitor, I think the board at the time purchased it thinking much, much, much longer term that if development were to continue and you need to build a school, you need land. And so I think there was an opportunity to exist and they bought it. That, again, that's my sheer speculation. Um, but if you guys want us to look into it, we can. And uh, I, I think it's, it's heavily restricted right now. What you could do would probably require a change in zoning ordinances. Um, but I think the time horizon for the school using it wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be in my career, and I don't think it would be anyone on this board's thing. Mm -hmm. It would be a long, long-term thing. But I think the thought was, as Mr. Hall said, it, it's right next to Freedom Borough. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, if you're going to expand things, you're, you're not putting it you know, a mile down into pristine agricultural land or something. It's, but we can look into that if you want. And, Get a memo for the plow for that. I mean, the board can do as they as they choose. I just wanted to collect some information. Yeah, I appreciate and, res that. and respond to yeah. uh, public comment. Okay. Any other uh, items of business? Hearing none, Mr. President. All right, uh, Thank Mr. You. Hash. Uh. Item 12-1, Student Transportation Report for March 2024. Um, real quick, they had 18 red light, um, red light violations. One was called on camera. 17 were called by driver observations. Um, the cameras are being rotated as needs arise. Um, thank you to um, our transportation first student for working together and over the month of March. They put together over 50 additional events that we drove students to, from field trips to smaller trips and events and athletic events. They uh, stepped up and really did a lot there. That is it for that report. 
twelve two um, Board of Education to consider approval of an updated memorandum of agreement with St. Jacob's Lutheran Church. Do I have a second? Second. Wait, did you make a motion? You have to make a motion. I want to make a motion mm -hmm. to approve an updated memorandum of agreement with St. Jacob's Lutheran Church. Do I have a second? Second. Any questions or comments? Nays or abstentions? Motion carries. 1203, other items of business? I do have one if anybody else has anything first. No? Um, on the next um, agenda, I would like to see an item to start the process of putting together, putting together a committee for um, the hiring, finding hiring of a additional RSO for one of our other campuses, probably Shrewsbury is where that need would be just because of location. Um, it takes a while to get one of our guys over there. So if we could have another in the rotation, primarily based out there, that'd probably be good. Um, the committee, I would like to see, uh, you know, obviously Dr. Ruppert, the current RSOs, Chief Childs, like those people, would, I would like to see involved in that. So start. We currently have two now, is that correct? Two, uh, yeah, we have two uh, and resource you officers. on this campus? Mm -hmm. Okay, so to your point, coming from Truth Barrow. Mm -hmm. So one's classified as SRO, the other one's not SRO quite um, they rotate among all five buildings mm -hmm. um, sometimes seen here because their offices are at middle and high uh, but they have a rotating schedule that varies so they're not always here on campus they do split time uh, the other piece is uh, in the case of emergency we would utilize obviously 911 which Shrewsbury is actually located closest to uh, SRR's SRO or yeah SRO Southern Regional as well as state police have quick access down in 83 as well um, so it's why you might see them over here more secondary campus but they are over there as well that's an interesting point was that I assume that that was the, the nature of the fact that Shrewsbury Elementary is so close to Southern Regional, I mean, it's still, it's still not the same as having an SRO on campus, but, um, yeah, I mean. So would we be able to see um, percentages of, of ha what, what it would look like if we had another officer? Um, and would what how would that affect our coverage i mean obviously that's a sensitive subject mm -hmm. because that's not something you definitely necessarily want yeah, yeah that you could know be in the public i but um if if we it would be i think time well spent to have an understanding of how that would affect um you know our security for our kids because lord forbid anything would happen but um <coughs> in the event that it did having more coverage gives us a higher probability of someone being present to stop it so I guess my question uh, is with the idea that it's in the budget for next year or with the idea that we're looking into it for a future year I, I think you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to figure out because of more seeing where the feasibility would be, yeah. where if we can get it done, how we would get it done, and that's why obviously Susan would have to be integral to that committee. Is it even possible? Yeah. So then go from there. Because clearly, if we're passing a budget, <laughs> well, right, it's we're going to have to wait for the next cycle. Like, yeah. Um, so like, yeah, I think. If, if I'm reading, if I'm reading yeah, correctly, bring, bring we just want to get the ball rolling so he's like, on this, it, and by establishing a committee, and would that be an administrative committee, most likely? Um, yeah, it can be an administrative yeah. committee. And and in that case, do we need to 
do we need to pass that at a board meeting? Or we can just ask you to do it. Just ask us to okay. do it. So it's done. Um, <laughs> that was the easiest thing we've done tonight, y'all. Um, so so yeah, let's do an administrative committee, and, and with the with the target being the budget that we're passing next May, because that way that way you're allowed to time. work it into the budget that you're creating for that year, rather than um, trying to jam it into this budget when. I mean, one of the things that I've discussed this issue with you is, is there's not even a person that is waiting in the wings to do this, to be the SRO, so. Uh, right, correct. Yeah. That is the. Yeah, that, that's probably the bigger challenge. And the, I think you, know, you said that, or you said, somebody spoke with Chief Child said there is, mm -hmm. there is nobody that's jumping at it. Mm -hmm. And it takes, um, in speaking with our current SROs, it does take a very specific person mm -hmm. to be able to do this. And it's not some, something that somebody else right off the street can go walk right into. It's a very specific person mm -hmm. that we would be searching for. And one of the things we talked about was if we could put the committee get together and then have a recommendation um, for our first presentation in November of the budget, uh, then if, if the board's in favor of moving forward with it, maybe we can start to advertise and look for that person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we'd be ready then to yeah it's not a process that i would like to see rushed by any means it can't be we we even talked about real quick we talked about how to package that as a safety uh school safety coordinator who mm -hmm. happens to also be certified mm -hmm. sro um because the role is a bear and we're splitting it amongst many people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it just makes mm. sense if we're going to put a team together that we're going to talk big picture, how that could be utilized, and we can get as much bang for your buck as possible. Any other items of business from anybody else? All right, President, turn it back to you. All right, Ms. Dauberman, athletics and extra are. Thank you. Item number 1301, the athletic report. Um, this is as of April 4th. So a few things have happened, but I don't know what they were. Um, the Warriors are off to a strong start to the spring season. Track and tennis are just entering their regular season competitions due to challenges brought on by the spring weather. Below you will find the current highlights as well as the all-star selection from winter season. Congratulations to the following winter athletic athletes um, for earning YAIAA All-Star honors. For swimming, it's Tyler Burgess for the 200 medley relay, Jack Hammond for the 200 medley relay, Jackson Hollinger for the 500 freestyle, Isaiah Voss for the 200 medley relay, Tyler Wright for the 100 breaststroke, 100 fly, and the 200 medley relay. And Kate, I knew I, I had it, <laughs> Kalmanovich for the 100 fly. Um, the boys basketball, Joe Fuller, Silas Leonard, and Brooks McKnight. For the girls basketball, Annie Labach and Elena Snyder. And congratulations to all of them. For spring sports, the girls lacrosse team is off to a strong start. They are currently four and zero and sitting in first place in the YAIAA. Boys lacrosse is currently sitting four and one on the season and tied for second place in the YAIAA. For softball, they are currently sitting in second place in the YAIAA Division II and baseball is currently in a three-way tie for the first place in the YAIAA Division II. And that, that concludes my report. May I make a comment? Sure. So uh, this week, um, York Daily Record uh, Athlete of the Week, one of our students, uh, Ben Lippy from the lacrosse mm -hmm. team, is up uh, on that. So if anyone should feel so inclined to go on to the York Daily Record website and vote for the Athlete of the Week, we have one of our own there, so mm. thank you. 
if you have not exceeded your three views. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> What's that? I said if you have not exceeded your three views, <laughs> and you can open it. Oh, and I, full disclosure, he's he's my nephew, so. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? That concludes my report. Thank you. Um, 14, committee report other business. I don't have any. Anybody else? I think we covered it all in the other, other businesses. Um, 1501, Legislative Council, uh, Ms. Mary Lee Hall. Oops, sorry. Can I start over? I think you're good. Okay. <laughs> so PSBA Works for You sent a communication out to all board members on April 1st, and it was an invitation to submit proposals for PSBA's 2025 legislative platform. So please access the 2024 platform. Um, there's a link provided that you can read all the principles and prepare any kind of additions, modifications, um, anything that you'd like to bring to the board for consideration. If we do have s s proposals to submit, we have until June 28th to do that, but of course, we have to make it on an agenda item if anyone wants to talk about anything. So um, all you have to do is pick up that link on the PSBA site and take a look at all those principles and see if you wanted to update any of that. Um, there are a couple of things that were passed by the House of Representatives, but they are still in Senate committee consideration, and the, both the, Hennes, the Senate and the House returned to session just Monday this week, so I'll have more on my report next month. And that concludes my legislative report. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Dalvaroon, York County School of Technology. Um, they just wrapped up their musical, SpongeBob SquarePants. Unfortunately, I did not get to see it, I, which is didn't work in my schedule um, but they also set their graduation date for May 23rd at the York Expo Center um, and then they also um, have new student orientation on May 2nd and that concludes my report 15.03 the LIU 12 uh, report is attached for your information and then 15.04 uh, uh, York Adams Tax Bureau Ms. screen do you have anything and then 15.05, uh, the Southern York County School District Foundation, Ms. Marley Hall. Okay, yes. Now this one I will not abbreviate because there is so much exciting news coming from the foundation. All wonderful things. So our last meeting was held on Tuesday this week, April 9th at 7 in the new high school library. Thank you to those who arranged the space for us to meet. And the SYCSD Foundation is looking forward to the silent auction in celebration of Give Local York. So some paperwork here it's a flyer you'll see it on the school website as well with all the information coming up so the silent auction begins April 22nd at 9 in the morning and until Monday April 29th at 9 p.m. so all proceeds will be used to help fund scholarships and alumni programs so save the date you don't want to miss the bidding process it's a lot of fun to see if you can sort of slip in there before somebody else outbids you and then all of it, all of the money goes to great cause. Uh, the next event coming up for the foundation is the Distinguished Leadership Recognition Dinner on Thursday, April 25th at 6 p.m. And I hope all of my board mates have RSVP'd to attend. It's a wonderful evening of celebration and gratitude. And finally, the most, anticipation, the most anticipated foundation event of the year is the Scholarship Awards Program. So that will be held on Thursday, May 9th at 6.30 p.m in the high school auditorium. The foundation approved scholarships with a value of approximately $152,000 for 88 students. So very exciting. Can't wait for the evening. It's a huge thank you though to all of the generous donors who made that possible. And the foundation greatly appreciates the support of the community and all of our wonderful donors. And the next official foundation meeting will be on Tuesday, September 10th. So I can't believe I'm saying it, but Happy summer, everybody, on the foundation, right? And then very much looking forward to another year of service with the foundation team. It's been wonderful. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Hull. Um, other items of business? Not surprising. Um, all right, the secretary's report, uh, item 16.01. The uh, student activities report for March 2024 is attached for your information. Does anyone have any comments on that? 
All right, then uh, the donation from the giant company. Uh, there's a donation of $8,463.66 from the giant company through the Feeding School Kids Initiative. For your information. Huh? It's all him. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, resignations and retirement, 1603. Uh, we have one. Um, other items of business, I have none. Anyone else? All right, moving on to item 17. Uh, Dr. Upper, I think you usually take 17.01. Did a great job there, Mr. President. Uh, no, this, this is just our enrollments for uh, home education at 210, and then uh, Cyber Charter. Uh, numbers for our Southern Digital Academy. Uh, we still have our Digital Academy. We have seven students in there, uh, but we also have uh, indicating uh, there are 15 students that are enrolled in Lincoln Intermediate Units, their version of uh, the cyber program. So uh, good numbers. Numbers are lower than what they were, you know, two years ago. Uh, but still being able to provide the option provides that flexibility for our parents and students. All right. 17.0, uh, um, announcements by the board president and superintendent. Uh, I'll mention that the next regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education will be held on Thursday, May 16th, 2024, in the district's office's multi-purpose room beginning at 7 p.m. Um, and um, are we doing a, no, we're not gonna meet after this. Okay, yeah, it's pretty late. Um, all right, uh, so <laughs> then I have no additional announcements. Do you, Dr. Bryson? Real quick. Uh, encourage you to come out next Wednesday starting at 3 30 uh, for unified track if you've never seen a unified track meet it is awesome all of us will be out helping judging and uh, my usual task is raking long jump but <laughs> come on out it's a real cool event if you have a chance um, since uh, Mr. Buffington still here in the in what's left of our crowd just want to give him a big uh, kudos um, if you don't know mr buffington he's our operations director and has been presenting almost on a monthly basis for us because of the building project uh, but more importantly tonight i'm just giving him recommend uh, recognition for presenting an eight-hour session with a couple of his colleagues uh, at the pennsylvania association of school business officials and the topic was uh, planning, prep, bidding for building projects, we, which we all know he knows a little bit about. And apparently his professional association thinks so as well because they invite him to teach uh, a bunch of the new guys from around the state from different school districts. So thank you, uh, Randy, for not only presenting but helping out uh, your colleagues from across the state. Also wanted to give my appreciation to the Giant. Uh, just in general, they've been giving us donations for years now, uh, and usually a fairly, fairly big check as it was this year. Uh, lastly, we've received a thank you letter from the York Literacy Institute for our continued support for Buck a Book reading program this year in York County. About 1,400 students read over 8,800 books which raised $72,300 for literacy programs due to those who sponsored the student readers. As always, our participating elementary buildings outdid themselves in support of this essential opportunity to promote enthusiasm and appreciation for reading. So a big thank you to all the kids and sponsors that participated. Keep living your dream. It's late. Have a good evening. All right, uh, 18 new business. Anyone? No? Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Oh. I make a motion. There we go. <laughs> motion. Are you still seconding? <laughs> All right, we are adjourned. <laughs> okay.